All right, my name is Jim DeBacchus. This is the Mayor Thon 24 Hours. We are now into hour number nine. Um, I hope that you've been with us the whole time because it's been fun and we'll, we'll go through all the stuff. Michelle Corigliano is the co-host right now. We are in Sapa's. This is one of my favorite restaurants. We are hearing the incredible story of how cool this whole situation is with the founding of this restaurant by this amazing family. So, let's get back. You're here, all the kids, mom, your big sister, kind of the patriarch of the family. Matriarch. The matriarch. Matriarch. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Please. The matriarch of the family. <laughs> and we're, we're talking a little bit about, it's eight restaurants? Eight restaurants. Uh, in t yeah, eight restaurants, construction company, a bakery. Um, yeah, we are, Sapa Investment currently stands at almost 300 employees. Whoa. Yeah. And all the family works in it. Most of the family. There's a couple of brothers who do, do other stuff, but yeah. Do you allow your other brothers to not work here? They will come and partake in the free food. Oh. <laughs> they will bring their friends for the sister. free food, but they did not actually work in there. Just no. like men, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were there for the exactly, free food. Exactly, exactly. No. All right, but so go ahead. We're, we're, it's, I want to say, you know, people caught the other part of it, where we came from with the hard work, and you know, where I mentioned we were on government assistance right after my father died. I feel like it's one of those true American stories where we, yes, we lived off the government for a couple of years because we needed it, but since then, we have really given back. I mean, the amount of taxes we pay alone over the years have been more than giving back, but it's just one of those things that I love hearing about refugees and their ways of coming up, coming to the U.S. and being able to have their family, have their success stories now. The food alley that we mentioned, one of the big things with food alley is that's our way of giving back now. To be able to open, have a space for local restaurant owners, family, not even restaurant chefs, uh, refugees who have who have a passion for food that did it in their own own homeland, but they come here and they want to do the same thing, but they don't necessarily have the the capital or the know how to open up a business here. This is what we're doing. Is we want all of these re refugees and food from all over the world represented in the food alley, and we are helping these people who have that passion do so it in the food alley. we're gonna go across the street. Tell us what we're gonna see. What is the food alley? And it's nine separate little restaurants uh, from 17, different countries? 17. 17 restaurants. There's gonna be about seven large, larger restaurants as in you know 50 to 100 seats. But the, the rest of them are smaller micro restaurants in shipping containers. What we're gonna see over there is the uh, existing buildings that's on the property now, we we're rebuilding to make a um, those larger restaurants where there's gonna be a ramen shop, a Italian restaurant, a steakhouse, a new American, a, a Vietnamese restaurant. And then in the back area where we have dug out the footing and foundation, it's where the uh, shipping containers are gonna go. And those will be the smaller micro restaurants on the ground floor. The second level will have artist lofts for people to come and create and sell their our, their artwork to um, the community. We're going to have a farmer's market style on the second level as well. And there's a walkway through there? There's a walkway through. Um, I'm sure a lot of people, have, if you Google Food Alley, Salt Lake City, you'll see all the renderings. And the renderings are going to be very true to what it's going to look like. I bet a lot of people wonder about parking. Like, what are you going to do about So, that? parking, we have, um, it is street parking. We There is quite a bit of street parking around the area. We have, um, Tracks. Second East, Tracks is really close. Tracks is only a block and a half away from Food Alley. We have Second East, uh, that's gonna have a lot more parking that we do in Second East. 17 restaurants, 17 art restaurants. space, $30 million, 40? No. no. We own the construction company. Okay, but I mean, yeah, how much is the project about? Uh, it's about a $10 million project. $10 million project. We're gonna go look at the land now before it all starts. This is gonna happen, and we need this food to go. There, where I will and, have someone take care of it. Have somebody take care of it. Sierra can yep. come back and pick it up. <laughs> then we're also going to uh, pick up the ch make a check oh, here. Uh, okay, yeah, great. No, this and, was terrific. And no coffee given to Jim because God forbid you should. 
bike in what? the park. This was so good. I can't wait to get across and see, well, me... see what else is going to happen here. This way, okay, great. Michelle, come on out, please. So I can look at it. Hey. <laughs> You're a good egg. You're just showing up everywhere. <laughs> no one can run away from you. It's true. That's my job. Did you want to? Yep. So this is the this is Sears. Sears. What's going to happen here? Do we know yet? Yeah. So okay, so yeah, if you're not hearing, let us know because we're. I'm afraid that it's an issue. So we're looking at the on the uh, west side of the food alley, which is on the east side of State Street right now. So that build the building Frank, where Frank Salt Lake is is going to be an Italian restaurant. On this side here, on the south side, where it says PIST on the side of the building. It's gonna be a um, a new American steakhouse right there, and on the uh, top level, it's gonna be a rooftop bar, martini bar on the top level. How's your proximity issue here? Uh, Are you? We should be okay. Wow. We yeah. How fun. The food alley is actually our goal. If we can do it, is uh, have have about three or four different bars, martini bars, I think and beer bars in the area. I think we only have. One rooftop bar. Don't right? Do we have any other rooftop bars? I don't know. I, I think, think Green Well Green Pig has yeah, there. Green Pig. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh, but that's what fun. you're gonna see on the and then in between is the opening to the food alley. So it's that PC laptop will stay there. PC laptop Okay, and the PC laptop stays and then um, We we wrap around the corner here. So we have an entrance from State Street and then an entrance from 800 South. An entrance from State Street? Mm -hmm. So people can turn left here. Onto 800 South and go to yes. And go that way. It's exciting. So we're going to go back on through the alleyway now. Yeah. And you're going to show us that it's way. It's going to be quite the construction zone. Yeah. So you so this is going to happen. You're already doing the construction on there, right? We are already doing the construction. Let me call one of the guys to see if they can... Cool. Look, there's a new one in there. Yeah. I haven't eaten there yet. Sometimes it's the wind more than traffic. People can hear us though. Ah, uh, okay, great. Thank you. So when will we be able to go eat at this place? Uh, sorry, let me... Okay, yeah. Uh, Bridger, are you at Food Alley? Who's at Food Alley? This is State Street? Yeah, okay. Let us in the alley. Then.
Restaurants will have their own little outdoor seating area in the front of it. And so, did you say farmers market? market? Uh, farmers market, yes. At the second level on this side, will oh, have a year round, a year round farmer stalls. Oh my On gosh. the second level, this on this side is where all the artist lofts will be. And they're all windows that will be open that you can actually see all the activity. Uh, fish. From the, can we get fresh okay. fish? Absolutely. It's a farmers market. You're gonna have meat. You're gonna have fish. You're gonna have Veggies, Fresh from the Great Salt Lake, it's going to be amazing. The brine shrimp, <laughs> all the brine local, shrimp. Like, exactly. You can get all the brine shrimp from the Great Salt Lake. So people will drive through here? Yes. Will it be driving or will it be all walking? Uh, technically it's a street so you can drive, but most of the time we'll be closing it off for street parties, for music, live concerts, uh, food trucks on the weekends. We'll come pull up in here once all the restaurants close down after 10 o'clock have food trucks at nighttime on the weekends to extend that whole um, nightlife in Salt Lake City. Uh, if you come around the corner here, right here on the corner here is going to be a coffee shop. Across the way is going to be, um, an, we're trying to find a nice barbecue restaurant here. So if anyone has I could do a that. good barbecue <laughs> restaurant that they want to open that's locally owned and <clears throat> operated, let us know because we need a good barbecue restaurant here. Uh, and then these existing buildings, so both sides, both existing buildings is where the bigger restaurants, bigger anchor restaurants will be. Stay. They stay. Yeah, these buildings are all staying. We're retro, we're um, renovating the inside of them. And they're just food buildings. Get we figured out how to get in on the She hopped the fence. They told me we couldn't get on that she side. She hopped the fence. Is she really? <laughs> In a single so, bound. <laughs> right here is where one of the beer bars. The beer bar is going to go right here. The ramen shop is going next door right here. The ramen shop is going to be from Hero who created the menu at Purgatory. Oh, He's wow. going to be operating. So you have the shop. all of these young entrepreneurs, some yes. of them immigrants, many of them immigrants, who have been working in the back room, making other people money, coming up with these menus, young people, and you're saying to them, all right, this is your it's space, your you, you go girl, we, you we go capital, make this happen. We'll be the capital backer for them, and it's their restaurant to run and operate. Do you know yes. how bad the restaurant business can be? It can all go wrong. Just check it. Really? <laughs> you know what? The reason why we have so much faith in these people who we're meeting and doing this with is because we feel like we've been doing it for so many years. In total, we've been doing restaurant business for 30 years now, our family has. And we feel like we can catch them. We know how to set the restaurant up properly. We know how to look at food costs, how to give proper service, everything to make it so that's a successful restaurant. They bring their passion, they bring their recipes, they bring all that. We will support them in every other sense that we can to help it succeed. And this isn't like maybe it's gonna happen, maybe it's not, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. I mean, this, this is- This is happening. We're, per, we're putting our heart and soul and all of our money, all of our money into this whole project here. Tim, you can open up a Russian so. restaurant. Uh, Don't Russia. they do like fried fat wow. and stuff over in Russia? Yeah, that we could call it Putin's. <laughs> yeah, don't go there. <laughs> is this your it's, building now? This is our yeah. This is all of it. This building, that building, this is part of it. How did she do that? What's this gonna be? This one is gonna be where the, the Italian restaurant is. Wow. We have a chef who's been cooking an Italian restaurant, just like you said, in the back of the house, been cooking for 
years, and now he's ready to want to do his own restaurant. This seems super dangerous, and I think it's time to not walk up here. You're going to say goodbye to Michelle here. Oh, oh thank Michelle, you. Thank, you, thank you so much. Thank You've been you terrific. Thank you spend time with you. Yep. I'm take just going to hitchhike back to my car. Okay, great. I'm sure we <laughs> will I have that. I might have a car to drive you back to your car. <laughs> No, we got somewhere, don't we? We got Okay, great. Fine. Okay, good. What about this tile? Are we going to save it? You know what? I'm not sure yet. Mine, we save as much as we can at the truck room. Thank you. You're awesome. Thanks. You're awesome. Thank you. 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 <laughs> Would you? Yeah. Thank you, Sierra. So we'll have Sierra take you. There you go. Take care. Thank you, Hong. It's, can you hit the button? It's still locked. Oh, I thought you wanted me. No, no, no. Are we all in? Nope. Door nope. shut? Almost. Uh, yeah. Nope. Strapped. All right. Ooh. There They're we strapped. go. Okay, so the next one is Perry Avenue, correct? No. Liberty Park. Oh, Liberty Park. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow, that was that was that was something, wasn't it? Oh, what an empire those women have built, that family has built. They're going now. The next one is it's they, they, if that doesn't get you fired up about America and about the impact that refugees have on all of us and where to go, then you didn't, weren't paying attention. All right, Michelle Carigliano has left. We have a brand new, fabulous co-host for the next little while. Christine Stemquist is with us. Hi, Christine. Hey, how are you? Hi, Thanks for coming down from the Northland. Yes. Kaysville. From Kaysville. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. You are an amazing woman. For those of you who don't uh, who don't know Christine, she is the mother of um, medical cannabis in Utah. You were the driving force. You were the person who made it happen. You had the you had the dream, and all the good that did come out of it came from you. Uh, we'll see how the legislature screwed it up and the governor, but nonetheless, let's say it's probably better now than it was. So, oh yes, all of that is because of you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you so much. So you'll be the co-host. We're going to do a couple of things right now. We're going to Liberty Park, okay. And uh, one of the groundskeepers, this amazing young lady, is going to show us her view of the park and how it can be better and some problems and issues and things that are happening there. And then um, we'll be um, uh, we'll, we'll be going and visiting. Uh, a, fam a, family, a friend of Christine's. One right. of the patients that have advocated for the uh, Okay, so a real, um, a real family. A real family who's that, that, that fought very hard for Proposition 2. So we'll get to hear from Gary and his wife Pamela tonight. About how it all, how it all is working out and and the rest, so we're going yeah. to their home. Yes. Yeah? Yep. We'll be going to one of your voters' home. Then. Oh, yeah. wow! Yeah. Terrific. Well, I can't. I'm so appreciative of you uh, coming down and being with us today and, Thank uh, you. and chatting. And if you haven't listened to Christine on uh, the podcast, my podcast, uh, which is at www.debacusformayor.com, she's really amazing well, to hear your you. whole story. So. You can also search for the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, and wherever fine podcasts are sold. 
Okay, well, th that uh, that voice from God was actually uh, <laughs> God. It's a it was God. God. <laughs> <laughs> from our camera guy. Uh, cool. Who is a God? Yeah, who is? <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about the family that we'll be meeting. Um, Pamela has MS, and she has been wanting to use cannabis to mitigate those symptoms. Her husband Gary has been her caregiver, and he is the one that did a, a lot of effort into raising awareness for Prop 2, collecting signatures, and he's continued the effort after the uh, conversation of the compromise was announced. So he jumped on board with Truce and wanted to get more active after we had a special session last year. So we'll be hearing a little bit from them and how things have rolled out and how it's affecting them and if it's affecting them and really what they, what they think about all of it. And what they, what they have, and obviously the future and how that all is yep. working out. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. So, uh, do you remember when we What's met? The date? Uh, no. You don't remember Our when date we met? Right now? No, the, the address there. Oh, remember he's we're got going it. there. He's got it. Okay, great. He's got it. Six fifteen East, nine hundred South. We're not going in the park here. Not yet. Oh, we're not. Okay, so. Six fifteen East, nine hundred South. 15 East. Alright. So, yeah. All right. uh, 6.15, that's going to be on the other side. Uh, so we're on 900. Yeah. So, so it's going to be back it's there, actually. Us. Yeah, so. Oh, it's 16. Okay, you're going to Go, uh, go, go up here and turn around, or go straight, or go right, go right. Actually, there's nobody there, oh, so okay, I can this will move. And so I'm going to what east now? Uh, okay. 615 east, 900 south. Okay, so you can, it's back there yeah. now, okay. on the other side of the street. I'll go back here, yeah. back to 9th south. Well, this and is... I'm going to tell you where we're going this, this and is, why. This is 9th South, right? Right. Okay. It's behind us. Oh, it's behind us. Okay. So, we're going to go by a, a famous house. It was the house of Millard J. Berryman, who was called Barry. She um, went to Westminster College in October of 1911. And while she was there as a 16-year-old freshman, she announced to her dorm that she was a lesbian, and she announced that she was going to do her dissertation on an academic study of lesbianism. Her thesis request was turned down by Weber State, uh, by uh, Westminster, and she was driven from the dormitory by the other women that were in the dorm. In 1929, so remember this is 1916, over the next 12 uh, years, okay, we need that address one more time. 615 for East, 900 South. 615 East. 615, 615 East, okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> so, she decided to write this thing. Westminster said, uh-uh, not in our school. You're out of here. She spent the next 10 years doing her own groundbreaking thesis called The Psychological Phenomenon of the Homosexual. She followed over a decade, 23 lesbian women and nine gay men, meeting with them very, very regularly and making a full study on their whole lives. It turns out that they were six six fifteen would be on the other yeah. side. These are these are evens. Okay. Odd would be on the other side. So the address has to be a little Okay, different. so let's just stop here. All right. Um <clears throat> so uh, Chris let's uh, let's let me finish the story here. Okay. All right. So it is it's nineteen twenty nine. She spent ten years doing this study on lesbians, 23 lesbian women and nine gay men. She met him at a special club that was in Salt Lake in the 20s for gay people. 
and she met with them monthly to completely follow their lives. Where they work, what kind of jobs, did they have discrimination, were they having sex, with whom, how it all worked. And um, she was refused to, um, she couldn't graduate from Westminster. Um, and to make a long story short, her study was the most comprehensive study of lesbianism before the Kinsey Institute and was called the greatest, most important study on the American homosexual before Kinsey. Um, finally, after she died in 1978, her paper was published in Signs, the most important journal of women in culture and society by the University of Chicago Press. She and her lover, I guess, lived here in one of these houses to the um, north of Liberty Park, and her name is Millard J. Berryman, and the University of Chicago Press called her study the most important contribution made academic-wise about homosexuality, and she turned her house into a boarding house where it was a lesbian boarding house for many years. Unfortunately, we can't find the exact and, ha uh, house, so. And, and um, yeah, you said the podcast again, we talked about it now. Yeah, but, okay. uh, right. Let's go to this corner of the park and climb out. Uh, okay, let's just climb out here. We're here fine, yeah. Okay. All right, we'll get out of here. And we're going to walk. We're going to walk over. Yeah. So this, this was a, the first really lesbian house mm -hmm. um, and many, many lesbians, it's all contained in the study, how many of them lived here and how it all went. It's a historic house, it needs a little plaque in front of it. That's where Berryman uh, lived and owned it and uh, Barry did. It's a interesting piece of history. Okay, there's a bicycle lady coming, so we might want to get out of the way. We're going in now. Lisa Cherry who has worked at Liberty Park for how long? Second year. Second year, and your job is your official job title? Groundskeeper. Groundskeeper. So you're here every day. Yeah, four days a week. Four days a week, yep. and you've been full time, and you've been part time, okay. and, mm -hmm. and whatever. And you're just going to walk us through your perspective on Liberty Park there. The, the new Rio Grande. The new, oh dear. <laughs> uh, the new Rio Grande. Here we go. Just bring the sign that we're taking down and bring it on over. All right. 
So you lived in the neighborhood here yes, I did. until re relatively recently. Mm -hmm. So I think it's one of the great parks around. I mean, it's just wonderful. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. the effect on other people. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, we moved in January because of I, I mean you could walk out and there's people sleeping on the front porch. Uh -huh. Too many things were getting stolen. I mean the primary was going much longer. In the neighborhood. Yes. Uh, I don't know if we hit the button. Oh yeah, yeah that can keep an eye out. So um so what kind of things do you do when you're working here? Oh shoot we you name it. You can either be helping out with the gardening, or you can be picking up trash that's everywhere. You can be in restrooms, tree branches, or dealing with whatever person comes up with whatever situation. A little bit of everything. There's not one set thing. A little bit of everything as we go. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> She's like, no, no. You so. gotta be careful with your hands and needles. There's a lot of good wiggles in there. Yeah, that's how they used to go. You know, if you don't have a pipe, there you go. If you don't have a pipe? Yeah. Just light one up. There you go. You set it up. That's actually, yeah, you saved your shotgun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trash can. Trash can I get rid of this? Right, right here, it's there. trash. There we go. That's a, that's a cheap fill. Okay. <clears throat> Something. I see. So, look, I'm looking, I'm seeing a pretty idyllic park. I'm seeing a lot of people wandering around, having fun, nice trails, picnics. It's just a, a, just the perfect way to go. It is. It is the perfect place right now. But if you come here after dark or in the middle of the night, you either ha better have a big dog or a concealed carry. There is no way in hell anybody should be walking through here. Not any females, definitely not children, not young teenagers, nobody. Hmm. Are there any police in the park? They drive by. Are there police in the park? No, unless they're driving by or we've called them and they will eventually show up. We're a very low priority here. So there's no, there. look how beautiful that is, looking yeah. down there. I mean, we've got a bunch of kids playing, we've got kids over the kids down, setting up for that for tomorrow. There's fantastic things going on. Yeah, it's just, it's just idyllic. Yes. So you're going to show us, though, some of the things we can improve and, and, and get better about the park and problems we've got to face as far as you're concerned. It's the safety here is the biggest thing. I mean, you can't go a week without one of the homeless guys threatening an employee. At least once every week. Have you been threatened yourself? Just this morning. What happened? Um, one of the homeless gentlemen was camped out over here at the pavilion with a whole bunch of others, and we have to clean that out first thing in the morning for reservations. Right. right. His friends moved his stuff. He was not happy about it, but it was either move it or it's going to get wet just to spray everything down. Right. He came running up a half an hour later and yelling all kinds of stuff. And luckily, one of my bosses was driving through, stopped, and it still didn't get him to calm down. Mm. So well, instead of coming at me repeatedly, like he usually does, he went after one of his friends. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you got involved when he was when he <laughs> going after my one of his friends. Did. My boss did. He's pulled a knife on me before. I won't get near the man when he loses it. I will not. So you know who this is? Yes. So do the police. We call on him regularly. He deals out here in the open. Deals. He, he, you, whatever you want, pills, weed, whatever you want, he's got it. And it's done out here. Is he open. around now? Yes. If I see him, well, no, he's got a knife. I don't, I don't know. I I'm not going to buy that. Totally walk right up. And no, I mean, right up just. He doesn't care. The police don't arrest him. He has a very lengthy criminal record. We called two weeks ago, I believe it was two, maybe three weeks ago, because he was literally picking up his dog in the air, beating his dog, punching him with his fist. Filled out witness statements, the whole nine yards. They still did not take the dog, and they didn't arrest him. 
this is just the way the park is. And the police say, look, we've got higher priorities and yes. we just... Well, if we can get them to show up, we can call, I'll bet you, three or four times a week easily, and they may show up once. We called, well, like of the 24th over here, two of our employees were working over here. A gentleman came running up and said, there's a guy over here beating his kid. The two employees went, saw what was happening, went down here, right, right, a couple hundred yards, talked to the police that were here for the 24th. He said, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it when we can. The two employees got back in their golf cart, followed the, the father, because he moved his car after they'd gone to the police. They followed him, got his license plate number, description of the car, and him rolled back down and gave it to him. Sat there for an hour and a half. Nothing happened. They never even went over. We've had two employees threatened last week that I'm aware of. It's, it's a daily thing out here. The needles, everything. What you see now is after somebody's been here for eight hours trying to clean up and keep things straight. And they've either sobered up or smoked enough that they've mellowed out. And they're usually just staying hanging over here. We've got some over this way. Bathrooms may or may not have needles in them. You have to be very careful. Would you let your child use a bathroom here? Hell no. With absolutely not. I would rather go over to the 7 Eleven, buy something, and let them use that one. I mean, you see people going in them like right now. But I've gone in there when there's been 20 needles. I, I've got a ton of pictures. If you ever want to see them, I'll show you. Blood, feces, I get, like the needles, I'll stick them in the toilet paper it pulls. So, when, you know, they don't get busted with the needle. They pull the toilet paper. And then they stick your hand in, pop out a needle, there you go. We found a bag of drugs over here at the playground. And I mean a good sized bag, we didn't know what all it was, in the garbage bin in the women's side. Filled out the garbage bag, go to throw it away. There's this purse, look at it, checking for ID. And there's all this stuff. So we just pulled out some of the cleaner and poured a gallon of it all over everything and threw it away. Because we can't get the police to respond. And Lord knows we don't want to carry it around. So how many acres are the park? Uh, it's over 80. It's over 80. And it's gorgeous. Right now, it's perfect. And how many staff people do you have? I have my direct boss that's here all the time. And then there's... That would be eight hours a day. Yes, oh, eight yeah. hours. Well, she usually works more than that. She really busts her ass here. She's the best person for the park that you could ever want. Uh -huh best boss I've ever had. But you can only do so much. So you have this full-time lady. Yes. And, and then we have six others, I believe, that we have to rotate in and out because we have to cover seven days a week. So six people, are all they, are they all full-time? I am part-time and one other gentleman is part-time. He works four days a week as well. So we have four people full-time plus the boss yes. and then we've got two part-time people yes um, and their job is all the maintenance and everything that we can we have uh, a gentleman that comes in and tries to do the sprinklers we have guys that come in when they're done with other parks that try to help mow because our boss bless her heart she has to get in on one of those great big mowers and you'll see her driving around you'll see her on the machines out blowing that the includes around. the maintenance and all the mowing and, and she does. security and all other things with that we don't have crowd. security here we we don't have anything here the only security we have is each other and, and the regulars to kind of try to look out for us what does that mean the regulars we have regular people who come in here every day patrons and, yeah and they walk and you know or they come over here and sit down there's a lady that comes over here and watches tennis every single day Mm -hmm. And she watches out for us. We've got. A what do you mean watching can... out for you? What do you mean? If there's something going on, some of them have our cell phone numbers. I've given mine out, and if they see something, they'll call, so we can hurry it up. And what might they see? Oh Lord, what don't they? We've had a female strip naked over here at the at the drinking fountain near Tizi Mall. We've had a gentleman over here at this playground. 
strip down naked, chase around kids at the playground at about 8 o'clock in the morning. Hi, buddy. <laughs> and then we had the parents chase after the guy to where he puts his clothes bags on, but then he went after him and he started chasing a little old lady. And he's naked? Yeah. And it, well, and he is put he, his clothes on once the parents start chasing him. Is he high on drugs or is he just taking his bath or what? what's happening? Well, who knows? Here you get, we've got so many mentally ill here. We've got so many drug issues up here. It's unreal. So if I went over there, I could buy drugs right yep. now? Yep. Not with this crew with you, but yes. <laughs> if you came here at midnight, well, let's say one, two, three o'clock in the morning, you could find whatever or whoever you were looking for. From 14 on up, you've seen it all here. I've walked in on people having sex in the bathrooms. I've seen hookups from all get out. I've seen guys pimping out their girlfriends over here on the side of the street. You name it, it is all going on here. Everything that we have been got moved here. It's just for a much bigger area. So you don't notice it as much. And people don't usually come to the park, you know, after dark. Our lighting, they do the best we can. We don't have a hell of a lot. We have it down this main strip, but that's it. So there's a lot of dark corners that people oh, can... Oh, yeah. People have... One of the homeless guys pulled a kid in here. I mean, we had to really majorly cut this down. What do you mean, pulled a kid in here? A homeless gentleman pulled a little girl in here and molested her. What the hell are you saying? I mean, I, I, I believe you, but I mean, you're saying some people brought their child here to this park. Yes. And how old is the, the girl? I don't know. Luckily for me, it happened before I got here. I don't know. This I know isn't like 20 in. years ago or something. No. Since the last year or two? Yeah, it's got to be at least two years ago because it was before me. That's why they had me come last year and we just cut the living tar out of everything here. They sleep up here. This is their toilet. Right up over here is where they do their drugs, right up inside here. There's a little cubby that they've got set out. They camp there. You name it. Let's have a look up there. Well, that's, that's the thing. You try to keep up with it, but there is always something. We, we don't have the people. We don't have the, any type of security. And it's a great place for kids. I used to be in my grandma's house. Loved it. Loved it. They stashed their stuff everywhere. Where is somebody's stuff stashed here? Yeah, you got your beer can there. Now I'm paranoid about picking up these beer cans. You should be. Because this is a little more private? Yep. Well, we, we, have, we have toilets. They're yes. open 24 hours or do we lock them? Um, they used to lock them. I've been told this year they're not because of all the problems of people using the restroom everywhere at all times. So now they're open, and but they do bad things in them. Oh yeah, they'll light fire. Okay, wait a minute. Let's get to talk about that. The light fires, what do you mean? Yes. Who would light hey. a fire in the restroom? If it's cold, they take hand sanitizer Little, even a little drop the size of a quarter, hand sanitizer will burn for about 20 minutes. Pull a bunch of toilet paper off, find cardboard or any garbage out of any garbage sack, go inside the restroom, lock the door, put the hand sanitizer on something, flick your beak, and there you go, you got a fire because you're cold. Or if you've got to dry out your clothes, there you go. We've got pictures. <laughs> it's, it's not a, a one-track thing. So this trash here, it's gone in the it, west. It, when when would you have cleared through the whole place? At least twice a day. At least at the moment. And that's part of your responsibility. Yes. Part of the six of you. Yep. Yeah, uh, that four full time and two part time. Yeah. For eighty acres. For eighty yeah. acres. Yeah. The clampets had a lot more. <laughs> the clampets had a lot more cleaning people. Yeah. And a lot less. And the sad part is that you can come up in here and wake them up in the morning and you never know what kind of stuff you're watching.
Washington. Can you He's hear? Pissed off. Yeah. And there you go. This is the local. Let me throw my sleeping bag down. Let me have sex here in the park, no matter if the kids are running through and all that. Yeah. This whole area, wonderful and great, it's beautiful. No way in hell would I let my kids in here. So what? What's the solution for? For from your perspective, is it? to have some police officers that this is their park, this is their beat, have this place covered 24 hours and people know that they're here? What, it, what, if, what is the, what is the... If they were even here a little bit, that'd be great. Right now, because of all the safety concerns for the employees, they've started patrolling the outside. They'll drive through. Driving through isn't gonna do shit. Park your damn car, come out and walk through. You can walk through here and I'll bet you you can get a contact high just following this path right now come here in the mornings you'll smell it clear down that way it's so strong they have to get out of their cars and they need to respond I know they're short staffed and we're a low priority I get that but when you've got naked people you've got guys over here threatening folks chasing after people a couple guys last year killed ducks over here and brought them over here and plucked them and ate them you've got every every Dark. Everything on the on the aspect scale, it's just it's. And and do you have you seen what, what the police say is? Look, there just aren't enough policemen. We got problems on the west side. We got problems here. We cannot. We got to prioritize what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you think by having police officer or two that out of the five hundred and plus police officers we have that this is their beat and they know it and. I don't know how many it would take to cover it 24 hours, but you think that might... Even if we had 12 hours, that would that would still help because you've got the farmer's market setting up. You've got all these people bringing their kids here because it's a great event. Come here, get your fresh stuff, and it's wonderful. You've got small vendors, small businesses. Bring them in. They're great. You've got kids running around. You don't know how many sex offenders you've got out here. You don't know how many absolute nut jobs there are. There's no way. And people just let their kids run because it's a park and it looks fantastic now. If you come over here on Monday morning by the bottom of the hill, you will find needles. You will find, I don't know how many used condoms. You'll find everything over here. The parks department is, I mean, we can't get people to work here. What do you mean you can't get people? Let's walk. Let's walk. Who wants to work in here? Why like don't we get down this way? Jim, our rides are on this side. Oh, okay, yeah, great. Then. Uh, so, tell me, tell me, what do you mean you can't get people to work here? Who wants to come to work where people can let's, pull let's, out let's knives? Let's make sure we get this. What? Do you want to come to work where you know people can pull out knives? Or one guy pulled a gun on one of our patrons walking. While you were working here? I was not, I was here, but I did not see it. The patron came up and told me later, and I asked him if he called the cops, yeah. and he said, why, they won't come. He said, we each had a weapon, he backed away, and so did I. And that was right here, right in front of Seven Canyons. In front of what? Seven Canyons, right here. Oh, that's the name of this yeah. area, yeah. So, you're saying nobody will take a job doing what you do because it's too dangerous. It's not that it's so dangerous, it's what you have to deal with. Who wants to come in and know at least once a week some idiot is gonna come running up, threatening to kick your ass or whatever else. He could have a knife, some have guns. And honestly, I can't say that I believe him. I wouldn't wanna be out here by myself. But there are some great people here who've come across a really hard time. They're not all bad. The normal, or our, what is it? Our usual people, we know. We know who the- You're talking about the people who are finding themselves without a home. Yes, that You're are saying normally most here. of them are just people trying to do the best they can. Yeah. Some of these folks have extreme mental illness and they have help that's been offered to them. They don't want it. Oh, wait a minute. Do you believe that it's not part of your job description as a employee for maintenance in the park 
to deal with people with extreme mental illness? You think you're, you don't think you're qualified? You don't think no, that's no, part no. of your job but description? As a human being, right. you should. Right. You just, you can't just ignore But everybody. you're the level that, you're the level that has the problem. Because yes. you're the one that faces it day in and day out. Yes. And that's, like it or not, that's part of your job description. Yes. A hello type of friendship with some of these guys. Some of them will tell me, watch out for this one or that one. I had a gentleman the first year I was working here come up and say, these are the people you stay with the hell away from. This one's schizo schizoid, this one's off his meds, and this one's always packing it. And I'm like, okay. And I took his word as gold. So. Well, B, give me some optimistic stuff because you love a lot of the parts of I your do. job. You have the opportunity to to leave, and you're you're not. You're staying. There's something you really enjoy about this. I love the park. I thoroughly love the park. I have the best bosses that a person can have. Destiny should go around the city and teach people how to be the perfect supervisor. Justin, just as great. We have really good people here. I come here every day and I'll laugh. I mean, they make you laugh. They make it fun. And even if you're in one of those moments where you just stand back and go, what in the hell just happened here? You can laugh about it later. They make it fun. I've, I've formed friendships with a lot of the regular walkers, some homeless. It's, it's okay. It's just at night and early in the morning, so you don't want to be here. You, you've been uh, telling me about um, about more personnel or more. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So, say hi to my friend, Vic. Hi, how are you? One of my aides. How are you doing? Good. We're doing our Facebook Live now. So. Facebook. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> Social media. Yeah. I know it's Facebook. So, um, Cherry, happy to meet you. Take see care you of you. See you Monday. See, see you at the next debate. Monday. That's Monday. Yep. <laughs> Richard's running for mayor. Yeah, but you're the front runner. Uh, hey, this, isn't this a wonderful idea for other parks to, to have this, to do this in other parks throughout the city? Right. This is what we need. Exactly. This is the best of all. Right? Yeah, it's terrific. It's gentrification. It's beautiful. Uh, it brings the best out of people. Can I say hi to your dog? Who's the front runner? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. How you doing? Right? Yeah, Francisco. Happy to meet you. What grade are you in? Second grade. So you finished first. Ah, and do you know this guy? Yeah, just my cousin. Your cousin. Hi. How are you? Where are you guys from? Um, we're both from Utah. From Utah, huh? Salt Lake City. Yeah. All right. And that's your aunt or your My mom? Grandma. Your mom. Right. Grandma too. Grandma. Oh, Grandma. You ain't too young to be there, Grandma. Uh, happy to meet you. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. Okay, I know I got four votes there. That's for sure. All right. So we are... What is your... What is your... Dream. What is your vision? What is it that you think we could actually do better? Oh, Lord. Um, okay, definitely not. No, let me ask it this way. If we had two or three police officers, okay. if we always had a police officer here 24-7, this was their beat. So it would be three or four officers because nobody's going to be here 24-7. Yeah. Would that help? 
Yeah, because I bet you over half of these people are on paper. So they won't want to be around that. What does that mean they're on paper? They're on parole. We have some that are just on parole for stupid things like they didn't check in. Now there's more. All kinds of silly little stuff. And then you have some for babies and different things like that. Mm. If, even if we could just get like a little moon substance anywhere around here, we've got enough down. I just told you. Anything. Just bring them in. Well, hell, I'll buy the damn coffee for them. <laughs> just bring them in. Let them do their paperwork. I don't care. Let them charge the radios. Whatever they gotta do. You, you're saying that would kind of leave a kind of uh, message within the community here that when they're in the park, they better tone it down. I would hope so. I, I would hope so. I would hope. I, I don't know where. There's just nowhere. They have to be somewhere. And I get that. But they're here with a bunch of family. And some of them are very dangerous. And half these people don't know that. They don't know the darker side. They see this, what's out here right now. They don't see any threats. I mean, I... I've been in this park. Yeah. You know, I'm not an everyday regular, but over the years, and I was a little shocked to have you walk me through and tell me what kind of stuff goes on. Well, I hope. Hi, ladies. How are you? Very well. I'm Jim. I'm running for mayor. I'm so late. So you, I don't have to talk to you. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. I'm kidding. You just lost her phone. <laughs> oh, no. I live anyway. in the house I was born in. in Sugar oh, really? House, so. And now you're a millionaire. So, yes, the prices yeah. of the houses. Yes. But they're going up a lot in Taylorsville too, aren't they? I'm so sorry. I don't know. Yeah. I've lived out there a long time. Right. Well, best wishes to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope that you continue to listen to the couple. Thank you for that. That's where it's about. So happy to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Have a wild time in the park. We'll have a wild time. All right. See you later. Thank you. So there it is. It is your place. Kind of. You're. You're feeling a sense of ownership. I can tell. What's, what's going on here? Because it gets. It gets aggravating because you come in and you see how absolutely beautiful it is. It's stunning. We had people out here getting married today. And you see it like this, it's fantastic. You come here at night, and it's a totally different story. You come here first thing in the morning, and you definitely see a different story. Is there somebody from the park here 24 hours? No, or no? no it's not safe, no. no. And so there's no police officers and nobody from the park after a certain time, and anything can go on here because and nobody's... And it does. Yeah, all these people for the farmer's market, fantastic idea, great for small businesses, Great for local farmers. It's fantastic. They have no security for all this cash, all this beautiful merchandise, and no security. If, if anybody happens to stay late and stay late enough, I hope they're packing. Well, uh, maybe I, maybe I need to come down here. You, if you've got an open hour night. tonight, I'll walk with you. If a group of people, I will come down. Here. There's no way in hell you could pay me enough money to walk through here in the middle of the night by myself. Wow. Not for a million bucks. I'm not just not afraid. Just, I, mean, I guess I'm too stupid to be afraid. Uh, You'll only be afraid once you see the dark side of it. Yeah. This is the new Rio Grande. You don't notice it because it's so big and it's daylight. So night that, time and in the mornings. What time does everybody arrive? Um, some of the employees are here at 6. No, I mean, what time did the, the, the overnight crowd arrive? Do you see all these little campgrounds all, all set up all through here? They're already here. There's just as many over there. They lay down, they put their stuff by a tree, put a tarp over it, and they'll come back. That's what all this is. Is parking, is parking, is camping illegal here? Actually, we can't get them out because it's a public park. If there's no room at a shelter, they have the right to be here. They but, can't close the park because we can't close the gates. But it is illegal. A tent to park in a in a camp uh, to camp in a park. 
if I mean, it's against the rules of this yes, park. You yes, can't, you're not yeah. allowed to. But it happens all the time. Yeah. We have people who live here in RVs. They just move them depending upon what's going on. They'll park on this side at night, and then in the morning when the sun comes up over here, they go over by the sun pool because they're shit over there at that point. Well, you've opened my eyes. Sorry. Thank you so much yeah. for your work, and thank you for loving the park. We need to work on this. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Cause for some sober thoughts. All right. Hey, so that's pretty sober. Yeah. It's distressing. It's like real grandma's moves. Is everyone in? Yep. Yeah. One moment. Sarah Michelle called me while you called me, and she was Done. going. To, she was going to bring glasses, but we're not going to do that. Okay, I, great. You'll have to tell her we're not doing that. So we are headed now. Christine, tell us where we're going, and uh, or you don't have to give an address, but tell us. We're tell us a little up, bit more about these family. Yeah, about the family. we're heading up to the Capitol, and um, we're meeting uh, Gary and Pamela Clark, okay. and they are a patient and caregiver, a husband and wife that I met during the Proposition 2 efforts campaign for the Medical Cannabis Ballot Initiative. And um, Gary came and saw me at a uh, non-denominational church speaking about uh, medical cannabis and wanted to join the efforts. And so he's been part of our little truce group and effort for a few months uh, before the election, helping us raise awareness on the, on the issue. So we'll, we'll be meeting with them. There's an older couple and Gary can tell you a little bit about his wife and the MS and what they've done to treat it. So. And it, we will hear their story. Do you hear these stories over and over and over and I over do. again? I do, often. I get messages daily, um, email messages, social media messages, and not just me, other advocates in my organization, other team leaders, we, we're always getting Messages. Can you give me the name now of a doctor that will write a letter of recommendation? Because the, they can't write a prescription, Correct. but they can write a letter of recommendation. Right now we're in the affirmative defense phase. So a letter of affirmative defense just says that you have a qualifying condition and that the physician thinks you might benefit from using cannabis. So when the program goes online, then those patients who have affirmative defense letters have to go back to their doctors and get the letter of recommendations that is then registered with the health department. So, so right now there's no registering them. There's no register. There's no patients that are registered anything right now. It, it is just physicians. And as to your point, yes, I do know a doctor, Dr. Andrew Talbot. He's up in Park City. At this point, he's written over 300 letters of recommendation. And is he risking anything? No, at this time he's not, um, because there is no cap on affirmative defense letters. But as soon as the program is operational next year, 2020, March of 2020, you're supposed to be having your medical recommendation cards. The problem we're bumping into is all those 300 patients now are now going to have to fight to get in to see Dr. Talbot to get letters of recommendation. But then he's capped out. He's not allowed to okay, write so anymore. Okay, so capped out. So there's one doctor who will publicly give these things? Currently. Currently we only have one physician who's been very vocal about it. And the rest of the doctors must feel some threat or, I mean, why aren't other physicians doing this? It, it truly is ignorance. They don't know how to manage this type of care. They don't know how to counsel their, their patients and so they're very trepidatious about getting into even recommending a substance they're unfamiliar with. So part of the law says that you've got to have this letter from a doctor, but it says doctors can only write so many of those letters. That's right. So for a regular general practitioner, which most people go see as a GP, they can only recommend 175 of their patients to use cannabis. What if there's... What if they have a practice of a thousand people and they they just say sorry, go somewhere else? Well, that yeah, they're capped out. 
So that physician can petition the Compassionate Use Board to see if they can get another 100 patients. But oh, Jim... Wait a minute, Compassionate Use Board. Oh yes, we have a Compassionate Use Board. We have a board of seven physicians who will, who don't have cannabis experience either, will sit and determine if patients in this state should or can have access to cannabis. So most likely members of the, oh, not most likely, members of the Utah Medical Association, these, the physicians, mm -hmm. And they, uh, the, there was no bigger opponent to what was going on than the Utah Medical Association. Correct. And so seven out of seven of the people that are going to say this were, are members of that Utah Medical Association. Yes. Probably. Yeah. I mean, there might be a, there might be a physician that isn't right. in the Medical Association, but mm, let's say most yeah. practicing physicians most. are, right? I mean, yes. We do have one person on the board that I do know that I and you probably are familiar with, former Representative Ed Red. Right. And now he sits on the Compassion Use Board. He was not always a fan of cannabis and has gained a lot of knowledge over the years. Um, so we're still we're still a little um, reluctant with the board. We're, we're there, every patient that is between the ages of 21 and 18 has to go through the Compassion Use Board to get a letter of recommendation. So they can't, it can't be, so what is this board going to do? It's like some <laughs> giant Supreme Court. So yeah. if some child is, 18 year old is suffering, they're going to listen if a thousand cases. So here's the thing. A and child can the that compassionate has, board, can they give more than the limit? Who knows? Right. They're still making their rules. Um, with the compassionate use board. So you have, say you have a child who goes into adulthood. You have a child that has epilepsy, it's, you know, all through his childhood, goes into adulthood, has documentation that they have epilepsy. It's on the conditions list for the medical cannabis. They still have to go before the Compassionate Use Board to get approval, to be able to get a letter of recommendation to get access to cannabis. <coughs> who else can go to the Compassionate Use Board? Anybody who is not on the conditions list. So if you're okay, illness... So conditions list is a group of very very specific disease states diseases or yes. disease states and if you don't meet that very narrow definition you don't get it unless you choose to go to this seven member physician board yeah it's like a death panel I can't you know what I mean just the way things go in the state just like they don't like drinkers on DABC I can't imagine that they're gonna have a lot of people on there that have compassion. I think they're going to be the letter of the law kind of people. Uh, yeah, I, I don't understand what they're, they're trying to evaluate. If a person has a disease state, they have the symptoms that could benefit from cannabis. I don't know why they have to not just jump through the doctor hoop, but then another hoop. And then, then they have to go get a recommendation. And it's just this bill, this HB 3001, the replacement bill that went into place, is not patient friendly. It is not about patient access. We reduced grows, we reduced dispensary sites throughout the state, and we put in a compassionate use for that patients have to jump through hoops to get access. We hear our legislators tell us that they are for medical cannabis, but they don't write legislation that reflects that. They're not for it. They are not. I mean, why is they, 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 it's just a lie. They weren't, they had the vote, they had the opportunity, they were there. And they fought it every step of the way, usually covertly, because they understood that their their people were for it. But then, after the people passed it, they marched in and said, "No, no, 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 no." I mean, I, I give me a break. This idea that the legislature was just doing the will of the people by countervailing the will of the people. Right. It doesn't work. They were doing the will of special interest. It was the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints that wanted this special session, and they got what they wanted. There's no other entity I know in this state that could call and request a special session like I watched happen. And that was very disturbing for us. Well, it has been done, and they put out the they put out the cattle call now for people to grow it. Yes, we got our license granted last week we got eight licenses so in the law the replacement bill we went from 15 grows to 10 grows and then they just released eight licenses so we have what does that mean 15 to 10 grows we had access under prop 2 we had up to 15 grows that could be awarded in the state that means with people have 15 authorized companies to grow right 15 marijuana 
licenses, correct? And then with the compromise, they reduced that to 10. And then um, the ag department decided they only wanted to release eight. So we have, you know, a reduction in supply. We have a reduction in distribution centers or, or sites. It doesn't seem like a program that really wants to take flight. It's extremely anemic. Um, eventually, some people are probably going to get medical cannabis. Oh, for sure. Definitely. But it's going to be people who are close to sites, who have funding to do that. How will it work in the real world if you're in Salt Lake and if you're in Ephraim? Ephraim. So if you're in Ephraim, there's probably not going to be a dispensary. You'll have to probably drive into Salt Lake. You know, you're going to, going to be going to large cities. Um, with only seven distribution sites, you need it in the most heavily populated states. Um, or, excuse me, counties. Right. And so we're looking at the Wasatch Front, St. George, maybe Cedar City, you know, a, a one or two down south is that. But a patient will have a recommendation when they go and meet with their physician. They say, I have, you know, suffering from this. Here's my medical records. The doctor says, you know, let's try, rec we really recommend cannabis to you. If the physician doesn't write dosing parameters, which is a prescription, if he doesn't write, he or she doesn't cannot write. write. He can't write a prescription, but under HB 3000, and one, the, the language they use is dosing parameters and the description is um, a set time and, and dosing for a, a specific condition. So if the doctor refuses to do that, which he should because he doesn't want to risk his DEA license, then that responsibility is then pushed off to the pharmacist. The pharmacist then at the dispensary or pharmacy, cannabis pharmacy, will write your dosing parameters saying you should be taking this one-to-one -one three times a day for your Isn't that sleep. weird to have a pharmacist? It is not typical in real-world practice. You don't walk into a pharmacy and say, I have strep throat and let your pharmacist write you a prescription. That's not how it works. Um, there's a little debate between this. The pharmacists are saying we should be able to do this because when you come into a pharmacy and you want to use something over the counter, we are permitted to recommend this product over another product because we know and we're more familiar. That's the pharmacist's argument. The doctor's argument is that's practicing medicine and you are not qualified to do that. You cannot write well, dosing Well, wait a minute. What, so if the doctors prevail, then... But they can't write dosing then parameters. Right. They won't write the parameters. They don't want the pharmacist to write. So is this just like a, they don't, just don't want the... They're back to where they were with the medical association position which is we don't want anybody to write this stuff this, exactly they this bill was written in fear and designed to fail do you see how they have pitted the pharmacist and the physician it's playing tug of war over the patient's care they have created nothing but mess and chaos in the name of compassion yes in the name of Meanwhile, the real patients are suffering still. Well, the real patients are out here wondering, you know, our legislators aren't listening to us. Our doctors don't want to move because look what they've done. They've made it so that it threatens a doctor's DEA license. It, it's very, it's a very complicated situation. What are we going to do about um, pricing? How does, how is that determined? The price of the marijuana and, and where will people go to get it exactly? Pricing is probably going to be dictated by the Ag Department. They're, and, and I know that they can't be too out of the limits, but it's still going to be more expensive than it is in the legal market. You're paying for, uh, yeah, absolutely, be compared to the illegal market. Because you have to pay for a pharmacist that's on staff 24 hours a day or the, the entire time a dispensary is open. So that's going to take, what, two, three pharmacists to be on staff, plus the bud tenders, the people who will be engaging with patients. This is going to be an expensive program. We have blister packs and all these other packaging requirements. There's so much restrictiveness to this program that there's going to be, in my opinion, few that access it. Seven dispensaries in the whole site. I, I, I mean, somebody up in Morgan's going to have to drive to Salt Lake and, and back. That's just a long, for a chronically ill person, terminally ill person, that is just a, a, a burden, an absolute burden. Now, there, there's, there's an issue about the banks in yes. the United States. People selling marijuana can't have a bank account. Correct, because it's a, it's a Schedule One substance. It's and federally the, illegal. The, the bank or the financial institution will be closed by the feds if they open an account for somebody who deals with marijuana. 
correct. Guess what our state's doing? Hey, yeah, tell me about that. <laughs> so our state put in a, um, this was uh, designed by uh, Evan Vickers. He came up with the brainchild of Central Fill, which is the D DABC model, but for cannabis. The DABC, but for cannabis, because the DABC is so efficient and Runs so, to and, and, Yeah, runs to rate. <laughs> so they said, let's replicate that and do it with cannabis. So essential fill, essentially, all cannabis is supposed to go into this central fill place and you, a patient calls online, places an order, choosing from online catalog of what they want, and then the state takes their payment and then distributes the cannabis to the health departments and or private pharmacies, cannabis pharmacies. So basically, our state has become a drug cartel. So every dime that is going to legal marijuana is going to the state. Well, it's, it, it well, yeah, because it, it, you have to use the central fill. Yeah, and then the state will take a chunk out of it, obviously. They can't, the, the state can't do anything. The state can't do this. When I sat down with Greg Hughes, I told him, you can't do this. It's a Schedule One substance. It's federally legal. You're having it run through your health departments. You are risking the administration taking funding from the health department because you are practicing an illegal drug cartel. Oh my gosh. So, I make a prediction. We're gonna have to have another special session to fix this mess. Yeah, but it scares me, another one. Who knows what they'll do next time? I mean, I, yeah, yeah, we need something. To... Something has to happen, because we, we're going into the next phase, the next phase. We just did the grower's license. Now the next phase is the pharmacy dispensary license. And we have to fix this problem so that industry can come in and actually fulfill the rest of this program. And, and, the, and the state is going to become the Amazon, taking people's credit cards, mm -hmm. then somehow digitally getting word off to the next people. How do they know? Then, then you, so you pay online and then you go into the store and then they, pick they, it up? Or into they the deliver it to the store and then you go pick it up. You're supposed to pick it up in the health department. You know, so when... when little Susie is picking up her wig for her and her children next door they're going to be dispensing cannabis because oh it's a brilliant idea Jim okay so we're right now we're gonna go meet the clerks we are we are gonna go meet the clerks. and Jim no. she is can't get out of her car because we're help so you're gonna slip in the car and have, just have a conversation with her okay that's okay. great yeah do we okay. know where the car is do you want me to you drive you closer right yep Okay. All right, you heard it. We're going to go. Oh, I think I can find him. Oh, so okay. I don't know if I can park here or not. See the two. See the two lions there? It's Integrity and I can't remember the other one. Honesty or something like that. Something, but Utah, the state capital here, while they're, we're finding where we're going, we are the only state that I know about that has a very expensive lobbying posh office in the capital. So if you pay thousands of dollars, you're allowed to have this master office. And right there under the Lion Integrity, this is the special, <clears throat> not a lot of people know about that. That's the special entrance where lobbyists pay thousands of dollars a month to be part of. So they have a big screen TV where they have what's going on in the House, in the Senate, and then they take care of everything, sitting down there, sipping drinks, and having uh, Cheez-Its and the, and the rest. Let's see if we can look down here. They wanted to expand a few years ago, and they threw the, um, the veterans group that have been in here since World War II out so they could expand it. I made such a big fuss out of it that they um, that they actually gave the veterans 
another office in the Capitol because this group of lobbyists wanted the veteran space and they took it. So it was only after we screened. So there it is, the only, and look at, look at how private and quiet this is. You, they just slip in and slip out and then they head out. So it, it always kills me because you see the city citizen lobbyists like with these wheelbarrows full of things and they're sweaty and they're marching around and they're trying to know what's going on and they're sitting there. And then you see the big corporate lobbyists that are down here in this air conditioned, it's heated more like it during the session. And they've got all the votes and the copying machines and little private offices and the rest and they head up to where they need to go and they're looking terrific that's something to keep an eye on all right uh, there's right there. Gary right Sarah how am I gonna know how am I gonna know on the time I'm gonna come get you okay all right Gary, how are you? Jim, Jim Bacchus. Gary Clark, it's a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much for coming and meeting us. Totally. It's really totally. nice of you. Love We're going in a car, right? We're, my yeah. wife is back here in the shade. Uh -huh. She's itching to talk to you. Oh, great. I can't wait. <laughs> she's, she's, we keep her in the cool because she's got MS and heat and MS don't really work that well together. Yeah. So she's in the air conditioner and in the air conditioned fan. MS, it's kind of really up and down, right? At least She's, from the people oh I gosh. know. You can't know from day to day if you're going to be able to go to lunch when you thought you would or get up or cut your meat. And there's all sorts of things. It can affect cognitive, it can affect physical balance, how well your hands work or don't work. There's, she'll tell you, there's a zillion things. When you have a very, very high MS rate in Utah, it's extremely high. Sorry. That's okay. You would if we lived here, though. <laughs> I'm happy. I mean, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. <laughs> Hi, how are you? It's such a pleasure to see you. Why don't we get in the back and we'll let the photographer sit here. And if you like to go yours. No, we can get this out of the way. Oh, okay. You get the button. Just stand clear. Yeah, all right. Stand clear and we'll, we'll just pull this out of the way. Wow, this looks very high tech -y. It is very high tech <laughs> That's one of the things you do when your, your, your technology starts to slip. You model this kind of technology. <laughs> yeah. Back yeah, I think so because we'll want to be uh, on the camera and have both of us talking, or three of us can get back there. Okay. I also have my walker. You want me to sit outside? Are you okay outside? Yeah. Talk about. Fifteen minutes. I don't mind sitting in the back. If I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Let's head that way. Can we get this out of the way? We can even put a picture. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, that'll Perfect. work. Perfect. Thank you, Gary. I'll get this out of the way. Yeah. Heads up, I'm not the driver of it. Lots of room. Okay. A lot of rain. Do you know my advocacy work is with patience and maneuvering. Is this door going to go, Pamela? Yeah. How is it when you, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you the questions once we can all sit down. This is what we're talking about with medical marijuana. This is what we're talking about. This is why I get so angry. This is why I'm sick and tired of hearing excuses by the legislature. Uh, we know what the people wanted and we were doing this. I have met a lot of patients like this and they need to grow up. It's not some big political game. 
thousands and thousands and thousands of Utahns are suffering while they're playing their stupid ass political games. I am, I am not afraid to say the truth on this. It's going to be another year or two and they're going to make it that much more difficult. The voters had a say, they went to the polls, and they had a system, and it worked just Oh, not yet. You know, I'm still only uh, eight or nine hours into it, so I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. So, are we okay with sound? Can We're, you hear us? Should be good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, you're coming through great so, up here. So, tell us your situation, and particularly with relevance to the new law, and uh, your opinions about stuff. All right, absolutely. So, um, my name is Pamela. Do I look at him, or do I look at you? Uh, We're live. You can look wherever you want. Say yeah. hi to look Facebook. anywhere you want. Say hi to Facebook. <laughs> um, my, my, my name is Pamela, and I have multiple sclerosis, and I've had it for 23 years. And multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease that affects your central nervous system, and it affects every every patient, every person who's diagnosed with it will have a different um, symptomology. Will have a different story to tell completely different it's our MRIs don't look the same our, our, our there, there are some there are some some that are common and familiar but but everybody really is truly an individual an individual case in that and so um, my neurologist has um, 1500 patients with MS that's in Salt Lake City Utah and um, 200 people are diagnosed each week of the church, the Church of Latter-day Saints, there, um, they, they came from northern European countries, mm -hmm. so um, at about the same latitude where Salt Lake City is. Why that's important is, if you have MS and you live on the equator, I mean, if you live on the equator, you probably don't have MS. But as you get further away from the equator, either north, north of it or south of it, it gets, there's more prevalence. So, for example, in Canada, they have a third more diagnoses than we do in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Australia, because you can be further away from the equator to the south. They, yeah. they have very, very high and high of it. But because, so, so Salt Lake City is on the 40th parallel, as is um, these northern European countries where the immigrants came from. So they, so the causes of MS, they don't know for sure. No one knows exactly what, what causes MS. But one of the um, contributing contributors, they believe, is um, uh, a genetic predisposition. Right? So that's why that those people coming from those, from those areas would have. So we, we, uh, we've seen research that says up to, Utah has up to 10 times more patients, more MS patients than any other state. And so it's that's big. So you've had a lot of problems finding relief medication or treatments. Right, exactly. So um, one of the um, symptoms, the most irritating symptoms that um, a, a lot of people from, can probably can, can identify with is um, that, so it's, it's your, it attacks your central nervous system. And, and part of that, depending on where the, the damage is on your brain and your spinal cord, everyone's different. Um, oftentimes it attacks your bladder mm -hmm. and you're getting the spasticity of your bladder. And so in the night, I would have to get up two or three times to go to the bathroom. And it's not just as easy as kind of, you know, when, when, when you get up to the bathroom at night, you kind of just stay fuzzy and, mm -hmm. and make your way to the bathroom and right. hopefully get back in bed without having woken yourself up too much. Right. Well, 
I have to get in my it's a production. I have to get, <laughs> get in my powered scooter, right. turn on the lights, get there, get on the hill, and to do that two or three times a night, it really uh, everyone you, you know that when you don't sleep well, like you're not going to sleep tonight, <laughs> you, you will be affected by it tomorrow, right. right? Both in your mental health and your physical health. So sleep is very important. So I found that that um, the vaping is the way that, that I started. Vaping with cannabis. cannabis. So cannabis is, is become a therapy for you. It has. It has. Okay. You know, and specifically that there are different types of cannabis that mm -hmm. we've already discussed that. Yeah. But so so I take a type of indica um, before I go, go to bed. And I can sleep through the night. That's I don't have to get up at all. And plus it's risky. It's risky for me to be walking at night. Trying to go so it's so it's I don't irritating. That's so it helps you sleep and it does help with spasticity. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely. Yeah. Right. And then um, anxiety, which is, is not, a, a lot of people do, don't talk about that part of the disease, mm -hmm. but, but the anxiety that people with MS have because it's a, it's a central nervous system uh, disease, it is messing with your nervous system anyway, so you're anxious there. But from the time that you're diagnosed, August 12th, 1996. I know that from that day, it's going to get worse. Um, and, and so you, you just don't know how fast it's going to go. So, so I've taken many disease modifying drugs. I've had a good run. I've had a, a really good run. But so for, for 23 years, I've had it. And the anxiety is what's coming next? What over looking over my shoulder? When, when am I not going to be able to get to the bathroom? When am I going to be trapped? And um, so, cannabis <laughs> during the day when I'm trying to schedule appointments or um, make decisions, um, I do um, a strain of uh, cannabis, which is called sativa. Which so and so, what, what the doctor gives me for that anxiety is um, like a Valium or a lorazepam, which makes me foggy, tired, I don't get anything done. Whereas if I will just um, ingest um, some of the sativa cannabis, it focuses me, gives me the, the um, uh, energy for the day, and relieves this anxiety that I've been talking about. So you can see I, do, I, I am lucky that I have had the opportunity and the means to go and experiment with some different types of cannabis um, but there's no research there's there isn't no, there's no research out there you just there. have a lot of anecdotal so, evidence yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you have that piece of paper up there by any chance <laughs> no that's okay. so you were a supporter of prop two yes you and your husband well your husband i know very well because he helped mm -hmm. um advocate with us and stuff um so where are you guys now where, where are your feelings about where we are can you can you let our the mayor, the future mayor, maybe know <laughs> what your thoughts are about where we're at. Right. Well, right now, Jim, it takes um, a lot of effort to either have to find a friend who can drive out of state and buy it, um, and then I can't really be selective because um, because since I'm having to do my own research, I need to figure out which 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 terpene profile, which strain, which um, Method is it tincture? Is it edible? Is it vaping? Which 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 combination of those things could really work together to really help me even more than these these things these tests these little tests that I've done for myself. Has so. your life changed at all since the legislature passed the compromise? Um, what well, you know the anxiety that I <laughs> talked about. Part of it is is also being like breaking the law for my health, and so that um, so so that's so since since the proposition was passed, now I have a letter from my doctor, and I feel like a law upstanding citizen <laughs> again instead of like um, I'm doing something wrong, and all that I'm trying to do is live live comfortably, live as healthy as pain-free and as anxiety-free as I can. And so if you could help make that um, available where I could go and talk to knowledgeable people about 
cannabis and, and start you know, figuring out what's the right prescription for me. Is there any doubt in your mind that it is a different world for you when you use the cannabis than when you don't use it? Is there any chance that this is all some psychological thing? And if you were vaping in Vicks Vapo Rub, that you wouldn't have the same thing? Right. I already tried. It doesn't do anything. I still had to get up through the night. All right, so. Um, and so, yes, it has changed my life because I'm sleeping through the night. If, not, if nothing else, if there wasn't anything else, just that it would be enough because it affects your health and your mood and, yeah. and everything. But no, it's, it, it's definitely life changing to, to be able to have it. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. I truly appreciate it. Wow. Look, I'm. I, I, you sitting here in this car outside of the Capitol with some courage and some great inconvenience coming to meet with us, you're not just sitting here representing yourself but tens of thousands of other people that we've seen, some little children, all the way up to our most senior of citizens. I think the people spoke with a loud voice, and I don't think the legislature, and I don't think the governor listened. I think they, they took their prejudice, and they steamrolled, and I am sorry. I want to apologize, and I hope one day as a result of the courage of people like you, and in particular you, that you're coming out and you're telling us your story because it's not it's not pleasant to go in and say this is what I'm going through. We can do it. We can do it together. All right. You Have know. you talked to your own senator? No. No, we haven't. All right. Here we go. Well, okay. you've got a job now. Uh, Thank right. you so okay. much, guys. I'm I appreciate you. I'm, I'm off to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you his number. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wow, this was It'll terrific. It'll fade a bit to green. It'll, it'll actually fade a little bit over time to white. To white? Yeah. And just do it again. Yeah, exactly. That looks cool. Let us know if you ever need any help with social media. Thanks. All right. Thanks again. Yeah. Bye bye. Good luck with your. Thanks, All right. Thank you. I'll just leave everything the way it is. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks, dear. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a bad shot from the back. Thank you so much. It just didn't go. annoys me. These are real people. These aren't like made up little political windbags they're talking about. It's thousands of people like this. And to the people who compromised mm -hmm. and to uh, those that were there, I wish they would sit down and listen to 20 of these people. I think their points would actually change. So. I'm glad you got a chance to meet one of the patients that had fought so hard. Would you be? I think she's she's very mm -hmm. polite and yeah. I wouldn't do that. Well, at this point, she's using it and she doesn't care. You know? Yeah. And and I'm in the same boat. And there's a lot of us who are like, we're gonna lock up a bunch of sick people. Oh, there's you. Mayor. Hi. Bacchus, what's going on? Oh, are you crazy or what? Well, yeah, I am. I'm pretty crazy. Like, okay, but we haven't hit like late night yet. So. No, we haven't. Yeah, so I Don't still got a few hours. Don't come by my door. I am. <laughs> okay. Christine, right. thank you so Goodbye. much. Our co host Thank Good you. To see you. Again. Thank you too. Yes. Great. How's Great. everything? Good. We just met with a patient and just Good. had a little Thank piece. you for the work you've done on that issue. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get this right, you know? We do. We have a lot of work that still needs yeah. to be done and fixed with HB 3001. Yeah. So. That's no doubt. Yeah. So, but I'll leave you two to it. All right. Have fun. Thank you. See you. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye so bye. Good to see you again. Where bye are we going? Do you know? Yeah. We're, they'll tell us where to go. All this. So, look, I want to ask you how is it? Are you enjoying it? Is it like different than you thought it was going to be? Because you were on the council, you knew the business yeah. part of it. But. So, yeah, I know the issues, which is helpful. I mean, there it's a rare day that I'm sort of, you know, not don't have some sense of the challenge that 
evolves or that I'm educated on. So yeah, so I end up feeling pretty confident in most of what about the physical part of it? I mean, the, is it is it a as a council person you you know you had a public events and you yeah. had to go here and cut this ribbon and do stuff. Is it? Stuff? Yes, and I love sort of the external, be the mayor ribbon cutting. You know, I was lucky enough to be down with uh, Mayor Biskupski this week. Um, honoring and giving a key to the city to the soccer players I saw from the that. Royals. It was so cool. Yeah, I mean that was awesome. Yeah. And to just be able to look, you know, these women into the in their eye and just say, look, you know, you've lived your dream, so have I. Women can accomplish things. So that's been really special. Um, the hard part is balancing that, and in my case, you know, 17 cities, five townships, uh, population over a million, and really want wanting to impact Salt Lake County and to you know be a good leader to our employees and um, reform government where it needs to be reformed. So you know we're looking at how we can make that change in a real way. So and that's the challenge of any mayor, right? I don't know. So, <laughs> well, you told me something right after yeah. right after you said and I I won't forget this. You may have forgotten it, but you basically you basically said it's amazing how much funnier my jokes have gotten. Yes. How and many yes. more people lean in me. whenever I say you know what? stuff. My or... phone calls get returned really quickly. We could try. <laughs> Let's call someone and get tested out. Really? Hey. <laughs> Place the call. How do you deal with it's a that? Friday night. They're not going to pick up, but they will call me back within five minutes. And then, of course, I know my dad and I have talked about this, of course, former mayor. The minute you're out of office, yeah, yeah you know, well, it's like, we don't. Not, maybe not so much. So how do you keep it from so, going to your head? Because I think that's the lesson so you were work. saying there's to me. None going you know to what? Head. Don't don't get yeah. caught up in all yeah. this. You're no. no you're no not funnier than you were when you right. started. But you've always so. been funny. Oh, that's well, the difference. No. <laughs> I mean, so you you got to keep an eye yeah, on it. Yeah, you got to keep it all in balance. And I've I keep telling my staff it's when I ran. Um, for the U.S. Senate, that was a marathon. Uh, I ran for mayor, but it was filling in in real quick fashion for um, in the election to win for Ben Seat, an inner party um, race, and that was a sprint. And this is a hundred miler, um, so I always tell the staff, "Look, it may seem like this is the most important thing today, and it is today, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, I'm hoping I'm reelected in 2020, and we're here for you know six years and." That's a decent amount of time to make change. So I don't, I don't know why it comes to mind, but I, I'm thinking of John Kennedy, and when he was killed, President Johnson came in, and it's a lot different the way you guys <laughs> No, this <laughs> is very dramatic. <laughs> Look at what, where are you going? <laughs> but I'm just thinking you had, you had, you have two years left, and you had to think, okay, am I going to shake things up? Am I going to take Ben's team and right. go there? and? That's How right. did you go through all of that? And well, I mean, I think uh, I felt some duty to have it be the Wilson administration, but I also didn't want to start over. I mean, you often see change, um, you know, and I would encourage you if you're successful to really look at people's interest in continuing to serve. You know, often you won't be on the same page as someone, but I didn't want to go in and start over. I wanted to, and I'd worked with many of these people and knew that they yeah. had a lot of skill and a real interest in what they were doing. So I did make some change, but it was not top to bottom. So that was good. I had that sort of um, baseline uh, staffing as I made some change and, uh, you know, I just jumped in and did what I could to... Uh, Really, I want to honor the work that Ben McAdams did because he was a good mayor. I was a part of it. I was on the council, and most often we would support each other. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of what Ben had brought uh, to the table are things that I wanted to continue, including you know this long-term process that we're going through right now around homelessness. He led that, and now we're at midpoint. There's a lot of critical uh, things that need to be done. Uh, opening the shelters, get, getting them up and running in the right way. So that's an example of something I had worked on, but in a different capacity, and now I'm very involved with. How are we, I mean, nobody knows all the answers, even now, and, and people keep saying, well, there's only this many beds, and there's only gonna be that many beds, and whatever. 
it seems to me the big issue is um, how do we keep those people that you got to the table? You yeah. and Ben and, and uh, Jackie and the governor and everybody. All stripes. You know, you got Greg Hughes and Jenny Wilson at the same table and mm -hmm. They're all saying, all right, we're going to get come up with a hundred million bucks. We're going to solve this. You've got Gail Miller and the Huntsman's mm -hmm. and the philanthropic community. Mm -hmm. You've got maybe the best nonprofits on the issue around with Catholic Community yeah. Services and VOA right. and, and the Road Home. Yeah. So everybody's at that table. I mean, it seems to me that the big thing is now we got to keep everybody there. And as these issues come up and they're going yeah, to, to keep how do we... How do well, we keep the legislature from following that laser and going off to the next issue? Well, back to this idea, it's a hundred miler. I mean, we had to start, we had to make change. I mean, there, the idea of caring for homeless people, and we've always been good at that. I look at the work that Palmer DePaulis did on the Housing First model. Um, prior to that, the visionary leaders who came together, Harris Simmons at Science Bank was telling me is one of the initial people who came in to support the initial creation of the shelter at that time. My father, Ted Wilson, was part of that. There's been a long legacy, Pamela Atkins and others, who have been there for some time. So the foundation is there. We're just doing it differently. And we have prioritized state resources. You helped on that as a senator to let everyone know this is critical so we're just now at a new phase in that hundred mile journey and in fact when we get a hundred miles in we're gonna have another hundred to go we will always have homelessness we want to be a city that continues to be caring it continues to be competent and we want to do this right I think most importantly is to do our best to keep people engaged and like any journey, and it may not be able to stay in it in the same role for the duration, um, keeping people engaged, as you point out, is key, but also making sure that we're bringing new people in for the next phase. Um, I went down to the opening of the women's shelter. It's a beautiful shelter. I can't wait to see um, homeless women in our community come in there and be treated with dignity in a beautiful new space. Same will be true of the men's shelter, but we will see new issues that we didn't foresee. Um, I happened to be watching a World War II film uh, with my husband the other night, and the line was made in that film that, like, war is never what is planned. You have to be nimble and be ready to change. I think that's true of this issue. We have to be nimble, know that there'll be some unforeseen, um, ac you know, activities or unforeseen uh, challenges that were not penciled in in the beginning and be ready to adjust to those along the way. I, I'm actually very proud of the county and the city uh, and the state and the highway patrol and that uh, everybody seems to be there. I mean, have you been yeah. to Seattle, Jenny, lately? I have not. Or Just the airport. San Francisco. Yeah, I've been to San Francisco. Or parts of LA where yeah. Uh, people are Seattle. I, I know. It used it's, to be a great American city. People defecating on the streets. Every underpass on the highway is just full on the sidewalks, and they seem to have given up. Yeah, they and we're small enough, <clears throat> and we, I think we're a charitable community. Um, you know, over the years I've had some frustration with the state, and I do think they stepped up. So Greg Hughes was one of the leaders in that, and there were others, but I think we are now on top of this. and. We're a small enough, um, we're a small city, but we're a small enough county even that we can stay on top of it. So the city's budget is 330 million. How much is the county's? Well, we do a lot of pass-through dollars, but our, our budget's about 1.3, 1.4 billion. Um, our general fund is about 600 million plus minus. Um, we just changed our government structure and a lot of our unincorporated areas went to their own townships. So we're not serving those residents in the same way we used to. So that sort of changed our budget a little bit. What did bit. that do to your population? Oh, we have very small unincorporated population. We used to be second only to Salt Lake City. Um, and now we have just, uh, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's around 10, 15,000, I believe. So. Uh, for example, uh, Immigration Canyon is one of those. Yes. And there's a well, lot they're of a township. Them. They're township. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. That's it, a, yeah, it's, it's a township. The so there's yes. lots of these townships yeah, all over the place. Right. So what's the difference between a township and an uh, unincorporated area? Well, the unincorporated area, um, the Salt Lake County Council and I are still their primary government. Um, we have some pockets of people when we ask the questions you want to 
or municipality, a township, what, what's your choice? They chose to stay in Salt Lake County. So even in the heart of Sandy, we have some unincorporated islands. Yes. Um, there's a big unincorporated area outside of Sandy, Sandy that chose to form a township. Um, we now have Emigration, Magna, um, Kearns, Copperton as townships, White City, I just mentioned, outside of Sandy. So they now have um, local governance. Um, but we still what does have that a, mean? They have a city council? They don't have they a do, mayor, do they? They do. They've got a mayor yeah, we and they've got a city mayors. council? Yeah, and now Brighton's coming on as our new newest municipality. So is there any difference between a township and a town? Uh, yes. In a, you're getting into very okay, technical. So, all right, but, 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 yes, but there's there some. But. Uh -huh. And, you know, the townships are all part of a municipal services district and our unincorporated Hello, look, our friend Richard Pyatt. Oh, uh, Rich Former Pyatt. Former broadcaster, Richard Pyatt. KSL. You might need to rescue oh, us here, right? Yeah, get over here, Rich. Get say over hi. here. We're Come always say happy hi. to see Rich Pyatt. Um, so Jim's... Um, is Jim... It sounds like it sounds like Jim's grilling you. No, I'm not. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Hi, Jim. I thought Rod Decker and Rich Pyatt were rough. Let me tell you this guy. So, <laughs> what are you guys tell talking me what you're about? doing. Yeah, no, well, I'm doing a 24-hour marathon, actually. But, well, right now. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, that's good. So we, we've been up since 8 o'clock, so that's not that bad, right? Yeah, they, I woke know, up at 8. I got up early. Yeah, but they were trying that. to, she was trying to get me to, uh, Sarah was trying to get me to do something at 3 a.m., 2.30 or 3 Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, we do it? He's coming no. by your house. I'm, yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah, he doesn't know where I live. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so listen, somebody said, and nobody's, nobody's saying anything. No, if one of you 10,000 people say a word we're off. I'm going to defriend you. So somebody said, go talk to Hughes. And so I think at 10 o'clock, I'm going to go pound on his door and say, let's talk to him in He probably, he, he would probably answer. You know, he, he, you know, I want to see him in he's, those, he's not afraid of you. In those pajamas. He probably has his, sh you know, the shoes built in and, and we'll hash it out. Oh uh, boy. Yeah. Tune in. I don't know what you're doing at 10 o'clock. Uh, I don't know. Probably not tuning in. Probably to... sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> So, how do you like <laughs> life outside of Washington? Is it okay? Is it cool? Yeah, it's nice to be back. Nice to be back in the beehive state. I'm loving this weather. I think yeah. it's, I think this is actually great. This feels great it's right now. A little bit hot. Well, this is this is good. Can you imagine 100% humidity and this heat? It sucks. Yeah, but you had power yeah. there, Rich. So you know you got to give up. You got sweatiness for power, right? I, I I had a similar position to yours on the hill in the nineties. I don't know. If you, don't really, power, you don't really you don't really describe it as power. Yeah. Did I you live know. in DC? Did you? you did. For who did you? She was the chief of staff for uh, Bill Orton. For Orton. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, big high five. Yeah, yeah. that's great. It helps actually to have that federal experience now, <clears> as I working on we, you know so much of what we do is relying on the federal government and transportation dollars and grants and um, clearly Medicaid expansion and trying to work on how Medicaid traditional Medicaid works with the federal level so that's all really so how come so how come you're grilling her no, was she should be grilling I know you I should. you're the candidate yeah, good point. Can I ask you? Can I ask you a question? Can I grill you? Can I surprise yeah, you? Go ahead. Like so I got a little. I got a little flyer from one of your competitors today, Ooh, mm -hmm. asking about moving the refineries away from the, away from the city. What do you think of that? Well, I'm for moving the refineries, and I'm th for no homeless people ever, and I'm for ten billion dollars to make new roads, and I am for making the clean air like disappear crystal clear and I'm for crystal clear water water and making sure that our our mountains are pristine forever I mean who is it who who wouldn't want to get rid of the refineries right, right. that's not the question it's, it's is it a big breakthrough to say let's get rid of the refineries you know all right let's get rid of them but tell me how I mean, the thing that is, would be, I think that would be a major. I don't, I don't really know what how you would even begin right. to. Well, yeah, I'll also have to that. look at what rights they've been given. Yeah. I mean, we, well, we have, have been, they've been there. They've been there a for, very long time. I mean, the the location <laughs> was um, along transportation corridors. So That's one of the primary issues. And now, I mean, there's one of the things that is frustrating as an elected. At times, you want to make change. And private property owners um, may not want to be to have the vision that a, a leader has, but you know we are a country um, that believes in private property rights. 
we have a system that's been created around them. It's been, you know, I heard some, not to get too deep in the weeds on the port issue, but there are a lot of people that felt like, you know, their indigenous people have not been respected with their rights over the years, and I completely agree with that. But we have to go back to federal policy and constitutional change to address that before we can do anything on the land at the, um, the port area. Yeah. So there are things we can do to make sure it works, and maybe there is even with lawsuits a way to stop it, but there's some, um, things aren't always simple. You have right. to go back to constitutional, you know, federal, down to state law, to local. You condemn it, and then you gotta come up with a billion dollars from taxpayers' money to pay for it. Right. You, yeah. Because you, you, you can't just, it's still America, you can't just go to somebody's property and go, hey, Sorry, your billion dollar investment, it's over, we don't like it, and whatever is, you know, that's that's not really a solution to say, yeah. boom, let's yeah. move the refinery. I mean, I, I, would, I would like to do so that. So here's another question that I wondered about, because I got my ballot in the mail. You're going to ask Jenny. Plus, you've one. got one in Salt Lake, I believe. One vote? One, one vote. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> in the mail? Oh, okay. okay. No, you got, there's one refinery in Salt Lake, <clears throat> yeah. that was my understanding, and right. then North Salt Lake. So this may be a little bit of a pedestrian, this isn't that. quite the same kind of, you know, right. gotcha-ish, I guess, sorry about that. But the, um, and the ballot, like how do they determine what the order is? Like I noticed Aaron Mendenhall's first, like how do they determine the order of the candidates when you have a The lieutenant like governor that? decides, and... Is there like a concern about the, about like, sort of like... Someone may want may get the ballot and be like, oh, I don't know, first one here. Yeah, I think I stu studies show that the first person gets a certain advantage, one percent or one and a half percent. But I'm not I sure it helped me with Mitt Romney. <laughs> Maybe I. I don't know. Were you first? I think I was. Actually. But it was so close, you know. It was so it, it, close. It, 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 hey, I did pretty well in Salt Lake. Uh -oh. What do you think of Mitt Romney? But I think the lieutenant governor decides, yeah. and I think it's a mechanical process. So I don't, I don't think there's a way to cheat. Yeah. So, I think, yeah. you know, it is. Yeah. So, but, how, you, how do you it? feel about um, Mitt Romney's I'm doing so like far? Mitt, I'm guessing he's miserable. Because I thought, why would somebody with his ability to impact national, the national agenda outside of politics, he has resources, he's got a beautiful family, um, he's 20 years older than me. Um, why would one want that job at that point it's because exhausting. the senate as you know is and the and the house it's our system really is reliant on seniority so i predicted he'd go back and go mm, i don't know ask him i i wouldn't think he's having a great time back there you're in a washington insider what do you think he's liking or not no i think i don't have any gauge for how much he's liking it i know that when when he got elected there was a lot of people in our office and other Utah offices, Orrin Hatch's office most notably, that wanted to get jobs there and and they weren't hiring anybody from Utah. I'm not really sure Hatch was trying to get a job with him? Hatch's, people from Hatch's office. <laughs> you missed that, did you? Hey, hey is, if you win I'm this office, really sure, you I'm not really sure what happened call. there, but... I can no, see I'll say this. I don't hired. know how Romney likes his job, but I love mine, so I came out ahead. You came out I way came ahead. ahead. I love what I'm doing. But I just want, I, I want to say, that I think occasionally he shows, he appears to show what he's really thinking, yeah. and he goes after Trump. Oh, he's Trump. a person of integrity. But sure. then, then it's like he gets his head chopped every time he does it, like these idiots from the East Coast saying, yeah. going after him. I mean, I just think it must be hell. Yeah. It's a t it's well, it, it, Washington's a tough it's, environment. It's, it's a tough environment. Even when you win, you lose there. Yeah. And I think the, the thing about... Rep, I was trying to challenge the idea when Romney and I were running against each other that he was going to be able to go back and have immediate impact. And, you know, I think the Republicans were like, hey, you didn't win. You ran for president. You weren't our president. So there wasn't a senator who had more seniority to than him was he was just gonna you know turn it over to him um so i think that was a little bit of a uh, you know to speak frankly a little bit of a miss on his end to think that he might go back and end up with even a better committee assignment and and, and again he uh, we've from my perspective as a democrat we've had a long history of republicans in office and um many are effective it, it, to me it's sort of some more than others, but 
it would be game changing to I think have a Democrat in office back there, and that was really why I was to have somebody responsible to speak to the other side of the for aisle for six years. To cl- be there, to be there connect, for enough to time be, to, to yeah. maybe make a, yeah. And your boss a was the loss of Ben getting back there, but I'm happy to have a, a Democrat back there. Right. So not speaking about her or not, I mean, I'm just happy to have one Democrat in the delegation. Yeah, I think that's a lot of So I want to tell Jenny what people are saying behind her back. Republicans you, and, and Democrats. And unfortunately, I got to go. My my mom's Rich, in town. Thanks. So. Do you need some water? No, I just check in. We have this oh. new 0.5%. Are we scheduled till like midnight? The no, two no, 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 no. Like, I'm going to let you know. I'm just going to say. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to gonna... start like getting I'm crazy just... and say something mm-hmm. radical no, that's no, going to no, come no, back I, I, to no. bite no. me in the end sure. This is the last thing. Cause, so this you already what... had one of those this week, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah good point. <laughs> this is all I will let you do and parks and rec me. It's nice to see you, though. I had lunch with your sister the other day. It was really nice to see her. Say hi to your dad. I will. They're okay. wrapping Congrats me up Congrats on too. your new okay. job. I hope you're liking okay. it. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll All right. see you. See you later. Take see care, buddy. All right, good so luck. Here's see you later. So here's what it is. Because I talk to Democrats, you know, and people yeah. around, and Republicans occasionally. Yeah. Everybody gives you great marks. I haven't oh, heard yeah. one bad word. Everybody's thinking you're doing great. Working and hard. Team Jenny is there. You, It just seems to be running smooth, so yeah. congratulations. It's going well. We have some issues, and um, some of them were part of my doing at Salt Lake County in terms of queuing up a few tough issues. Um, ben left me a few, and then I've got some vision to do some cool things. We're going to focus on the environment. We're doing more on um, affordable housing. It's a really key one. Working with the mayors out in the southwest quadrant to figure out how we can be more responsive on transportation and have the state step up a little more on that, too, out there. So there's, um, you know, gross a big issue. And Salt Lake because it's built out has different issues as it relates to growth but i'm feeling it in my neighborhood got a lot of traffic i live right next to the u and there's a lot of um, buildings going up and it's kind of affecting the quality of life so i think growth affects us even in salt lake city um that we're fairly built out um and you know you see what's going on with the port people want responsive government government so. Well, high grades. Hey, one quick thing before we go. Yes, ma'am. The city-county relationship is critical. And I think it's more critical for the city, frankly, than for the county. Because we are a service provider to all of our cities. And our capital city is so critical. So we're already invested in working on the arts downtown. We have the collaborations. We are, you know, we're involved in, um, you know, social services, human services, the homeless shelters, the list goes on. So I know that we'll have a good working relation together. I mean, I if think the guy. you so. and I, if I win, are not going to have any turf or personality problems or anything. You'll, you'll, I'll be calling you and say, Jenny, help me. And you, yeah. you probably won't be calling and saying that. But I mean, I just, I'm not foreseeing any yeah. of that. Well, I'll tell you, I have friends in this race, you included, and the reason I stayed out and didn't, you know, I, first of all, I'm saving several thousand dollars. I haven't written any checks, so that's kind of nice, but also I just want to work with whomever makes it, and, you know, I think you have a good shot in doing it, and if it's you, I look forward to, you know, soon as you can to having a conversation about how we can strengthen the partnership. I plan on uh, offering a lot of Jenny's best people serious raises to come and work for oh, me yeah. in the city. So it, if that, that happens, <laughs> like, oh boy, all this friendly banter out in front of the couch. Right. All right, friend, have Jenny, a good one. Thank you so okay, much for I'm gonna, dropping before by. Before I go to pleasure. bed at like 10.05, okay, I'm going to yes, tune in for that do. doorstep. All deal. right, thank you, Jenny. All right, have fun. You thank are you, terrific. All right, you guys are great. Okay, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Mayor. What a delightful lady. Isn't she great? Yep. Our county's lucky to have her. We are indeed. We're sneaking in up on something. Do you want to tell people what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Kaysen, one of our interns is here. Okay, Kaysen, one of our interns is here. Go ahead. You tell him. He's about to propose. So we're going to sneak up and see if we can watch. No. And it's our other subtle. interns. Ruth is subtle. Yeah. Is she doing this? Ruth, will you do that again? She's sneaking up.
This guy is finally proposing to this beautiful girl. He's on our staff. We love Casey. So he invited and, us. And so he kind of invited us to come by. So we're trying to figure out how to wander by. But she's not very political, so we don't want to get too involved. But we still think it's fun, so we're sneaking up. They're subtle, though. Yeah, they are. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to go hunting. They've all been friends. We're on the road. So let's go this way, and then we'll go right back. there and stop it. Oh, so, but so we, what do we, we want, want to do? The, you just, kind of, what do you, you want me to go by now? No, I think we can just watch from here. Okay, so we're gonna see watch. if we can see. Let's go around. Okay, so we're watching live a proposal it's for Casey. It's Can we go over there? Whatever you want. All right, let's go over. <laughs> Do a quick What hello. if she said no? She didn't look like she said no. Might be a sympathy hug. All right, we're going to, come on, you guys. We're going over together. Oh, yeah. And we're going to say just. Let's just go give them a... We don't want to break into anything. This is, this is Senator DeBach. Oh, nice. congratulations! Congratulations! Way to go! Way to go, hey, brother! Thank you. You said yes? She said yes. <laughs> This is this is my stepsister Katie, by the way. Hi, Katie. How are you? You said yes, right? Yes. It would be terrible. You want to put it on. <laughs> okay, let's get this. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, we just happen to be going by. <laughs> Hey, thank you. We're going to so leave much. you guys. Have a, have a good one. Yeah. Thanks, thank Casey. Melissa, thank we'll you. see you later. Yeah. Bye bye. Woo. Look at this crew. I love them. <laughs> Look at that. We got another. She holds up. The little girl. The little girl holds up her ring and points to mom's ring and says, Can I have that one instead, mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Smart girl. Okay. All right, where are we going? No, I told them where to buy that ring, guys. It was so, probably square. We're, oh, we're, we're heading. Oh. That was cool. That was cool. Our boy, Casey. Yeah. Probably gonna want more money now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an intern. Oh, he's a volunteer. He's a volunteer. Okay. <laughs> what a great kid. What, he's been a great name. Great dad. And how thoughtful of him to have a little tiny wedding for her. her. Yeah. So cute. How cute that he let us be a part of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Where are we going? Our car. You're over here. Okay. And we're going up to see Pilar. Okay. You're solo for now. I'm yep. your driver. Okay. And so let's head to the car. Okay. Sierra, thank you. You're the best. I tried. Ruth, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I, I'm overwhelmed by 
our team, Sarah. I love them. How can it be politics? They really like each other. All right, how many more hours? Um, I... 17. Oh, 17. That just, can't be right. Just kidding. That was cruel. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> doggy. Okay, I'm going to slowly drive to our next location. Okay. Early? Well, just now it's about time, but I was giving Christopher a minute. Or, to get up there. But well, we'll get there. Alright. Okay. Well, if you pass the 7 Eleven and get a drink, she'll probably have something else. She'll probably have something. So, Let's... give people an idea of what kind of things we've got coming up. Okay. Well, I can't do that and drive, so I'm gonna. So, we are we're going to see this really cool house that Jim turned me on to. It's like enough a. Said. Okay, enough. We're gonna sneak into the backstage of Saturday's Voyeur. We're going to show up at the airport. There's a delayed flight, but we're gonna get there to see, uh, Sen uh, excuse me, Congressman McAdams. We're gonna pick him up. We're gonna pick him up, have a conversation. We are visiting a family in Rose Park. We're gonna do a bar crawl. We're go checking out State Street after midnight. And then we have a, a number of homes we're gonna doorbell ditch in the middle of the night. <laughs> gonna be fun and I still think we had to think about okay turn the camera on me I want to ask people something okay. oh okay yeah Sarah so <laughs> um, I really think we ought to go to Draper and go down and talk to Hughes and knock on the door he doesn't listen to my social media so I'm safe but I'm thinking that think it's a good idea or not such a good idea I mean I really want to talk to him a little bit not a little bit a lot seriously about the inland port and a lot of other stuff and I think if we knock on the door he has to answer because he wants to be governor and how do you turn me down at 10 o'clock at night if you want to be governor right I don't know how that those two would work so uh, what do you what do you think about that Sir, do you have a way I can respond? Look at what people are doing. Yeah. That was nice. And the find that for me. Say what you will yeah, about what's going on inside that building. The architecture of our capital is just astonishing and amazing and beautiful. Look at all the people up there now. It's just packed up there. What a tourist site it is. Sarah, it's all gone. Uh, what, uh, uns what unforeseen issues with the city's homeless <laughs> oh. do you encounter, and how did you respond? Good question. Um, I think, in a way, the whole. homeless thing is a bit now up in the air. We don't know how this is going to work. Nobody's sure this is going to work. These three centers, um, people say that we're going to be 700 beds short, and technically that's true, but here's the reason that it's true. The old big homeless shelter had the capacity to bring in hundreds of more people on a really cold night, in effect put them on sleeping bags and just pack them in. And technically the new homes do not have that overflow capability. They're not going to be allowed to do that. But it was very rare that um, that became necessary. So that ought to be something that we will work on and um, kind of get solved as we go along. So that may be the the one thing that in the immediate future we're going to need uh, to work on. So let's see what else you've got to say here. Uh, scroll in. Scroll in. Just 
get over there and uh, type up whatever you've got. You know, one thing that's, that's happened this time is we pretty much stayed on Facebook, unlike some of the other times when, or when we've done it, and Facebook disappeared every 10 or 15 minutes, so that's kind of really? nice. Okay, we are going up to an extraordinary home by an extraordinary artist that is uh, up in the avenues. She uh, came to... Utah in the 50s, I believe, from Spain, from Mallorca, and she's changed the face of art in Utah, and wait till you see how beautiful her home is and what an opportunity it is. It's, it's kind of a museum to great art, and it's not just paintings on the wall, it is the whole house that she just kind of painted so it's been turned over to a foundation and I suspect that you'll see why uh, in a couple of minutes when we get there um, it's, it's a wonderful place as we head up by LDS Hospital So are you getting tired, guys? On my way. On my way, just admiring your old district. Oh. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, the old Senate district yeah. here. Yeah, of course. Exactly. But uh, no, it's been a fun. It's been a fun, uh, a fun day, and it's going to be an equally fun night. And only too happy to be here with you. saying, just so you know, we're listening, um, have concerns, the mayor, uh, my gym, Sherry Park is watching, all right, anyway, we're glad to see people watching, remember that your ballots are, if you live in Salt Lake City, or actually if you live anywhere in the state, your ballots have been delivered to you. On your municipal election so Salt Lake City is just one of all the cities that are um, in the state that are having municipal elections so look look for your particular uh, ballot it's, it should be in the mail right now so here we are coming up on Pilar's and if you're a gym supporter you can go to Jim De, or DeBacchusForMayor.com and grab a, a a little banner and put it on your Facebook that says you've supported Jim. We'd love to see those get out there because um, we want he needs your vote. And we want you to tell your friends what you did. Thanks. That's my campaign manager. That's the campaign and manager. <laughs> Should I bring my jacket? It's kind of formal up there. Yeah, I would. What time is Mayor McAdams? Are we picking him up? What time? So we're going to be picking up Mayor McAdams at 8. So I hope you'll be listening, Dan. And I, when I mean pick him up, I mean we're really going to be picking him up. He's at the airport, and uh, the flight is a little delayed from Washington. So we'll be there and find out about what's been going on there. Uh, I didn't hear much about it, but there was some impeachment announcement. Might have been nothing that I saw going across. So. Okay, here it is. Notice, notice the architecture and the paintings here. Oh, I did. You are... One tremendous artist. Oh, wow. Nice to How see you. you. Good 
So here, this is the entryway. Look how gorgeous this is. How are you? Very well. It's good to meet you. You can look everywhere, and you have something that's there. And my God, okay. Do you want to show us around a little bit? Sure. So this is Pilar. Tell us, this is your home. This is the monument to great art. Hi. Hi, Monica Whalen. Hi, Monica. Nice to Jim see you again. Yes. How are you? I'm yeah, doing I'm good. so happy to see you good again. Good to see you. I have a great photo of you and Pilar together. Really? That uh, I may have emailed it to you. I'm not quite sure. And but where was that? So when you were one of Utah's 15 most influential artists, oh. and they had the oh. um, reception at the Rio Gallery, you came. Yeah, I And both of that. you were sitting on the bench together. Yeah. And you guys look so cute together. Oh, I, I will. I will email it well, to you. Look. Look at. Look. Look at what we're looking at. Oh, okay. Somebody else. Come oh, that's our one of our. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. So look. I mean, the details on the steps here. Everything is painted. The coffee table, the go. chairs, the beautiful, amazing art, all the ceramics. Pilar is, this is her work on everything, everywhere in this amazing house. I mean, it's just gorgeous. So, this is my, my house, and I have been living in this house since 1960. 1960, you've been here? Okay. And uh, so, and this house was. Um, it's a very old house. It was built in 1893, and we did a lot of changes here. But we tried to keep the the feeling of an old house. Good. But for instance, this part we built it ourselves. We had to ask permission from the city. They took a long time to say yes, but we, they did. And then this living room was. Um, this, the living room was only until that post there. And uh, we wanted a larger living room. And so we opened it into a porch. That was a porch. And we opened it up. And it's much better. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, cl you closed it. Yeah, we, we opened the, uh, and then we closed it. This is why it has this funny shape because we couldn't put a wall in front of the window or the entrance, you know. So <laughs> it has funny things. Yeah. But, and we did a lot of the work, my husband and I did that. <laughs> Yourself? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And how long have you been painting? Well, I, 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 I told you I painted my, all my life. When I was a little girl in Spain, I usually paint a lot. And my, my father, he knew that I was going to be a painter, an, art, an artist, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and he was uh, in the Navy, he, and he, he was always on, on long trips. And he went to France, to all many other places to study things, and be, became an admiral of the Spanish Navy. Mm -hmm. And always, when he came back, he was bringing me paints and brushes and all kinds of things like that, you know. And, then, and asking me what I have said, I have done when I wasn't there for that light this painting. Wow. And uh, uh, so I painted them. But then my father was killed in the Spanish Civil War when I was nine years old. And then my mother was very old fashioned. And she uh, didn't want me to do any work women at home or in a convent. Mm -hmm. And you? And I just started to get really rebel and lie a lot when I was about 13, year, 13 years old <laughs> because I wanted to do things. <laughs> not to do things that were not the normal for people to do, but I wanted to live my life the way I wanted to live it. And it's been, I have done it. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's terrific. And then this room is special. This is the dining room. And usually it's at the table in the center. But during the summer, we put it like that because so many people come. And this way, they, we can display more things. 
God, look at those beautiful ceramics. Yeah, these are, this is part of my work. The sculptors, they are all over the place. I told you my, some of my favorites. This is, this is the, when uh, Father Escalante and the people from Mexico and uh, the, the Spanish people came to, to Utah. Mm. And I did this for the anniversary of uh, the, the coming. This is why you have the name Spanish Fork. Mm -hmm. It's because they came, they were trying to find a uh, way more, they find a way more um, easier to come, to go from, Cali from Santa Fe, from New Mexico to California. Mm -hmm. And they came this way, but then when they reached Spanish Fork, uh, decided that it was too difficult. It was, and they, so Spanish Fork drove them back, huh? Yes. And then, but then, and, and then somebody asked me to do some sculptures of anchor for the commemoration of the 200 years. And I did three of them. And God, they're, they're like beautiful. Them. Yeah. So, so hot. I'm gonna take my coat off. Yes. So Della, this is, looks like it's signed by the King of Spain. Yes, this is, uh, uh, in 2016, the King of Spain gave me this uh, this honor. It's, it's called the Cross of the, the Royal Cross of uh, the Royal Order of Queen Isabella, and uh, it is because not just for my art, but because of all the things that I do here in Utah that are um, do honor to the name of Spain. Because I do many things for school children and for many people who need help and women and all this stuff. <laughs> and you deserve it. <laughs> and who else got, has got this award? Well, Pablo Picasso is one of them. <laughs> Pablo Picasso, he never really made it as an artist, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard of him. <laughs> uh, and the governor of Utah also has given me the Medal of the Arts and, and several other things, you know. There it is. And it's beautiful. And I, I wrote a book, and I also was uh, one the three the three books, best books of the year. Mm. So, yeah. Well, it's very good. It's We're gonna go downstairs and see something extraordinary. I'm sure there's not another house in Utah with this. It's a crypt. <laughs> And I love this painting behind us on the way down. We're going down some heavy duty stairs here. Yeah. Well, this is the basement, you know. Yeah. All this, this basement was not like it is now. Believe me, I have done this. Okay, now, in a general way, tell us this room is a crypt. Well, it is, you know, it is called my burial chamber. And, uh, uh, in the in the old times, like the pharaohs in Egypt, you know, in the old times, when somebody, uh, but also some kings of Spain and some people who had done a special thing, in the in they were they were buried underground, and they would would make like a room for them, and in that place they would put samples of uh, what they had done and the tools that they had used to make the, the works so they could go to the ever after and continue their work. <laughs> and so I thought of doing this myself because my mom didn't let me paint. I also learned to do many other things that I could do in, in her presence. And uh, so I did dresses. And so this is one part of your life when you spend time Sewing and, sewing and this is the machine and these are some of the and I have done it the rest of my life I sometimes do things like that still because once I learn to do something I like to do it I, I cannot stand to be without doing something so this is what I do and this is my cooking and this I'm, is your cooking and I'm from Spain so I have the olive oil and and the paella pan and paella <laughs> and the wine <laughs> And then I use wine for cooking too, you know, very much like in Spain, we do. And then I like to travel. So I have, I painted my 
my uh, bag suitcase there. Yeah, suitcase. Because this way I can see it and I, I don't get confused when it comes out of the, <laughs> out, out of the, the place. The place where they come. Yeah. Now you really wouldn't you wouldn't use that on a trip, would you? That yes, bag. I have used it. Really? Everybody looks at it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then they tell me, where did you get that suitcase? <laughs> I said, I paid. <laughs> and then there goes my, my, my working tools in the garden. Uh, but right now they are upstairs because I'm using them. But in winter they are here. And then it is, this is the culture of Spain. Because I am not very a devout, devout uh, person, but I appreciate what the Catholic Church did for the arts, because they brought so much beautiful art and, made, and built so many beautiful things in Spain and in other countries in Europe. Right. You know, so this is... Can you country. hear what she's saying? Okay, great. Pretty well. And so this is all on the work that represents some of the sculptures I did them when I first came to, to the States because of my memories that I, and I was inspired by the Greco and by people like that when I was doing these saints and things. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, this is the sword of my father. And of course, my father never used his sword. It was just uh, his power uniform. You know? Right. And then in that corner is my writing, because I like to write a lot. I like, like to write poetry, mainly my poetry is in Spanish. Mm -hmm. But I write in both in English and in Spanish. And this is people, uh, family and people that I know, some people that are gone, and uh, memories. Important in your life. Yes. Including Kiva. Kiva is my dog, the dog that I had before the one that died this year, a few a week ago, two weeks ago. Right. And he's going to come here too. He's oh. a pet meat. He's a, his ashes will be here. Yeah. You know. And uh, because he was my very, very good friend and I, I still have not recovered, you know. Yeah. And she was a wonderful dog friend. Yeah. She, she lived a long time because she was part of part wolf. Oh. You know, and she was beautiful. And so these are memories that toy was from my mother. Those uh, fans, one of my mother and one of my grandmother. And then all, all these, my husband and I, when I came to America, we married. Uh, I married first in, in the embassy of Spain, but then I married again in the Catholic Church. So beautiful here. And here this is, this is my father, and that is my father with me, and there in the back is my mother. And this is my art. And all these paintings have a meaning, you know, and I'm not going to tell you because it's too much. <laughs> the burial chamber it's called. And their music is by Ravel, mm -hmm. and this is, a, he composed it for a dead Spanish princess. Hmm. It's called Pavana para una infanta difunta. <laughs> so I think it's very, it's very going well in this build, in this room, because it's, it repeats itself. It hmm. repeats itself, like like life. life. Huh? <laughs> wow, it's so and, beautiful. And I also have all these papers here. It is because I like to know what is going on in the world, because I think if you don't are not. Uh, interested in knowing what is going on then you cannot write don't have the right to complain you know <laughs> okay. and Beautiful. i love this painting here this is a pure utah painting yes why don't you explain that one pure well you have to come here if you want to can you, do you have enough light i think so pure i'm gonna i'm doing this 24 hours straight so it means occasionally i need to take a two minute break so I'm gonna go upstairs and do that and you show my friend around okay, okay. and then I'll be right back okay so this is the pollution in Utah mm -hmm. you know I um, I replaced the, the cupola of the capital mm -hmm. with the beehive because this is the beehive state and these are the senators 
who are uh, they are flying around doing nothing. <laughs> and then it comes the big cloud, yes. the smoke that we have here, and we suffer. And there are we suffering in dirty snow and filthy air. And the whole thing has been approved with the great seal of the state of Utah. Wow. You know. <laughs> So I am very politically involved. Indeed, you know. indeed. I, I, I am 92 years old, but I still have my brain mm. and I try to use it. I think you think better than I do. Actually, <laughs> you have more of your brain left than I do. This is beautiful, Pilar. It's just, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very impactful. It's, it's got a very strong energy about it, a very strong sense of emotion yeah. about it. And having lived in Utah all, all of my life, um, I. I that this speaks to me in a very profound way. It's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank and you. And this has been several times has been in the Capitol, in the ca uh, Capitol building. Ooh. They have taken when they have, have been complaining and manifesting against the air. I can imagine that makes some people uncomfortable, <laughs> 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 which is good. Yeah. And this is another room. I mean, all this was a very bad basement, and I, I did it. I. Didn't do all the work, but a, a good part I did. Now, is this you? This is me, and I have just returned from a trip to Spain. I uh -huh. am from Mallorca. Uh -huh. And I came back, and they asked me to participate in a self portrait um, exhibition of artists. Understood. So I painted myself between the two worlds. Oh, that makes sense. See, the this is Utah mm -hmm. with the snow through the window in, uh -huh. my car, in my house. And this is a painting within the painting, and it is where my grandmother lived in Mallorca. That's beautiful. Where I played all the time. This is a very, it's a, this, this uh, house is about 700 years old. Wow. And, uh, and this is the wall of the city that surrounds the city. About 700 so I, years old. So, Se 700 years old. Yeah, it was built when the, after the, they reconquered the island from the Moors. Oh. Okay. And my family, the family of my mother and the family of my father went to recover the island. Mm -hmm. But my father's family went back to the peninsula, but my mother's family stayed there. And they built this house mm -hmm. at the same time that they built the cathedral. That's so beautiful. Thank you. That's so beautiful. We don't have structures like this, like that in this country because we're You're just too young. young. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, it, it yeah. certainly takes your breath away when you hear about something that old. And then, Things like that, I read memories of Spain, this artificial woman. I did a big collection of them, but it is, ooh, sorry. Don't you love this? It's just beautiful. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It, words fail. Words fail. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is, you don't have to photograph it, but this is the bathroom. So I painted a, a mermaid in the, in the door. And it's a nice bathroom. It's a guest bathroom. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, very nice. And so this, all this was dirt, and there was just a couple of piles of bricks holding the upstairs, mm -hmm. and I made them do a big. And my my husband was very ill when I did this thing, so Understood. I have to say I did it. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Well, it's an it's an opulent bathroom. You certainly yeah. spoil your guests. <laughs> here, here's the, the bedroom. There's not enough room for my paintings. I have too many. And I <laughs> sell a lot, but I work a lot. Well, that's when you just turn the walls into paintings or doors like this. Well, uh, I paint things that look ugly. And some things were so beat up in this house. It was very, very badly hurt in many ways, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were too, di too difficult to repair, I just painted them. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So, and see here is the photograph of the governor when they gave me the, the recompense, and, and then, you know, uh, then uh, something from my book too, mm -hmm. also, and things like that. It's <laughs> beautiful. I, and this is one of my last paintings. Last year I did it. <laughs> it's a crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And this, I do things that uh, I listened to music, mm -hmm. and this, uh, it was about a piece of the music 
the the submerged cathedral, oh, and wow. and it comes to my mind, and mm -hmm. I have this idea while I listen to the music how that must be looking. Absolutely. And then I paint the person, that well, the light coming through the water, and the thing semi floating under the water. I'm very fond of the sea because I, I lived in an island that absolutely I love the Mediterranean. Oh, mm -hmm. it, it certainly shows in your art. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Pilar. Oh, thank you to you. Oh, absolutely, it's my it's my uh, privilege. And now you have to see the garden. Well, you have to see the kitchen too. When you came yesterday, my kitchen was a mess because I was painting in the kitchen yesterday. It's gorgeous. It's well, we're gonna have a look at your garden. garden. We go yes. to the garden. Huh? Yes, I got it done. <laughs> Look at this. Even the bathroom is the epitome of art. Yeah. Well, I have art everywhere because I do so many, so many things. Wow. Yes, it's actually Just very pleasant out here. It's spectacular, isn't it? I do all these gardens myself, but I don't climb ladders. I told myself, <laughs> Sarah, you, do you want me to give you a boost up? You want me to climb a ladder? Wow. Look at this backyard and the grapes. Do you make wine out of these grapes? <laughs> <laughs> they were, they are grapes. They have been dominated by other things. These are real grapes. No, these, are not, these are they are coming from another plant. But I used to have grapes. Oh, these are not grapes. No. They just look like it. Yeah. So it is a big, a big garden. It's a fabulous garden. Yeah. yeah uh, this, oh, I didn't see that all there before. <laughs> yeah. Is that inspired by Harry Potter? No, I don't think so. And this is made with a clay that you don't have to fire. And I was, we were not sure it was going to last, but it has lasted. It has uh, wire inside, yeah. which you, in the regular clay you cannot put in. Especially outside. Yeah. But it's been perfectly fine, huh? even yeah. in the winter? In the winter, yeah. It's, it's, it's all nailed there, you cannot take it out. <laughs> Did you build? Did you build the shelf for the owl, yes. or did you have the shelf no. and then build the owl? We built the shelf. Yeah. And there's my studio. You want to watch? Yeah. All right. Should we go have a look? Yeah. I want to play because. Okay. We'll go this way. <laughs> you can go any way you want. <laughs> Thank you. Watch the rose mm -hmm. bushes here. And watch careful. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah. 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 Y
Polo. They look like polo fans. <laughs> so if you ever wake up and that painting is missing, I would come to my house first. Send the <laughs> FBI there because I love that work. And you know what? Artists... I've been, I, my job is artwork, and I know something a little bit about artists. And usually, if an artist can do a still life like that, or portraits like this, or a wonderful composition like that, they can't really do ceramics with that kind of level. Look at, look at those ceramics. I mean, I see no difference in the quality of everything. So you're, you're an equal artist in a different... Um, and you know, the idea of the painting of the frames, which also was my idea. I, I, there are not many artists that do it, and the one that do it is because I have inspired them. Yeah. And it was, uh, it started in the late 70s or early 80s. But I mean, you paint something like this, that's a major chore, right? Yeah. It's a major job oh, to yeah. paint these. It is a job, uh, something like a painting. Yeah. You know, and I, I do every, uh, I do a painting, and if I do the frame, for that thing. Yeah. You know, like for instance, this one, you see, it, it reflects the thing in what I do. And right. that one, that is a watercolor. Yeah. This is a woman from Mexico. It is called the, the, the Pajaro Catzal, which is a magic bird in Mexico. And she's a Teca. You know, and so this whole thing, the frame has to go with the baby. You know, not just. Not just, not just stick it in at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I, I look how much work that would be. And yet, look how perfect it. I don't, it wouldn't be the same painting without the frame. No, that's true. Yeah. And that one is in my kitchen. You know, so I have this stained glass in there, and then the flowers and tablecloths. You know, and I think the whole thing goes with the frame also. And this is a completely different type of painting. But you can do something that goes well with that also. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you just took this up to an exhibition, the, the actual painting. This yes. is a, a seriograph of it. Everybody knows who that is. Harvey Jean. But do you recognize her? She comes on at 7 o'clock on MSNBC. Rachel. Grace Maddow. 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 Yeah. This is, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Michelle Obama, Ruth Bird Ginsburg, um, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Meadow, and Maxine Waters. Oh, and instead, wow. they did a long time ago, they did the, ta the, the Knights of the Round Table. Uh -huh. Well, last year, I, it was the Year of the Women in, in, the, in the world, actually, not just in the state. Mm -hmm. So I call it the Dames of the Round Table. The dames of the round table, see, instead of the knights. Uh -huh. <laughs> here in English or here in Spanish. <laughs> uh, so what is, do, do you feel equally comfortable speaking Sp English as Spanish now after all these years? Totally. totally. Yeah. You know, uh, I think when you, the, if it's a stop. Just, we, don't, we don't have these anymore. <laughs> do you even know what this is? Crystal, come here. <laughs> Have you ever seen a phone like this? It was what in TV shows. In TV shows. <laughs> huh? yeah. It's a dial phone. And it works, right? <laughs> yes. But right now it doesn't. I don't know why. It has that uh, we had a big win and it doesn't work. Does it work now? Because it yeah. work. Oh wonderful. Okay. Oh, can you even call people now? Wow, that's so cool. Oh, it's a dial phone. <laughs> Yeah. Are you are such a treasure for our state. Well, I don't know. Well, that's and our city. <laughs> Thank you for but that. I love, I mean, I'm, I'm both uh, Spanish and American. You know, I have du a dual citizenship. I have never wanted to lose my Spanish citizenship. I'm very loyal to Spain, but I'm lo very loyal to the United States. And I'm very loyal to you. That this is like my country. Too. Right. I miss the sea. I miss the, the We have the Great Salt Lake, though. It's almost <laughs> the same. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I just think it Well, you come from, your family must come from Greece. Yeah, yeah. The I'm Greek. I'm half French and half Greek, so that's a far reek. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have Italian blood and, and uh, French blood. You have Italian blood, not just Spanish. No. My grandmother was Italian. So is that okay for an Italian to marry a Spaniard? Well, they mean not anybody, I guess. <laughs> I guess they did, like, like when I married an American. <laughs> yeah. I didn't ask anybody. One scandal after another, huh? <laughs> Well, we, we've enjoyed this so much. Thank you so much for opening your, your home and your beautiful gardens and your uh, studio and your vineyard here and <laughs> your friends with us. You know, it's just been an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor for me to come with you. <laughs> Great, Great to, to see you, you again. You yes, bet. take care. See you too. Come oh, back okay. anytime. Okay, we'll be back about nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quite a break at two in the morning. Yeah. Please <laughs> let my bed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's your favorite house in the world. Well, it's on my list of the greatest houses in the world, too. So, thank you. And you got a bird's eye view here of the of the city, don't you? Yeah. Well, you know, I had a better view, but they allow some of these houses to be up here. I am not. I, well, a little bit. I do things like this, <laughs> but not like you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. just amazing I mean that's that I've never seen anything like that in my life it was just fascinating and it's such a talent yeah I mean it goes beyond the word talent I don't think we built it we made a word for that yet yeah, I think somewhere if we need to. I don't know how the timing is going. Where uh, are we? We could stop. Do you need something? No, I was just thinking to go get something to drink, but if we're depending on how our timing is going. I think we've uh, moved time around, but okay. I can. So do we, I'm saying, do we, do we stop for 15 or 20 minutes and take and, and get something to drink or should we go? Right I think it's there? time to go. Okay. You okay Let's to do, do that? that. Let's head over there. So, um, I know Orlando's close by here. He's our next pickup, but I, he's not answering me. If okay. He's there, so I think we're gonna skip All by right. him. Yo, what did you think of the house, Christopher? It was amazing. He did some great art. And it's totally immersive, you know? So yeah. like, okay, this is the furniture, and these are the walls, yeah. and this yeah. is the artwork. And all it interacts. Is, like, did you see in her workshop, she had the one that was of her backyard with the, with the oh, grapevines and, and everything. It was right above the door. Yeah. It was amazing. I like how she had at the round table. That was hilarious. Oh, man, I loved it. Um, well, that was cool. Very. 
Kentucky's like that. Yeah. So we're going over to uh, some friends over on the west side. We're going to sit down and chat with them, and then we're heading out to the airport to pick up Ben. That's cracks. Okay, great. That's what we'll be doing. That's what we'll be doing. You know what, I think we're going to drop by and I'm going to go feed my dogs. Should we do that right now? Yeah, let's do that now since so we're by the house. Good idea, and then uh, if we hear from Orlando, we'll grab him too. All right. Yeah. This is my hood. It is your hood. My dog is going to be going crazy. It's going to be nonsense. Well, all there you the King of Spain gives out those kind of awards. Oh, Pablo Picasso, you know. Yeah, <laughs> just everybody. It's uh, it's rare that you go in a person's house and just the experience of being in the house, like you mentioned, Jim, is totally immersive. It's really something special. You know, we started the day with that immersive art at Gateway. But this is really, she's been doing this for 50 years. You know, that immersive art, those immer immersive sorry those immersive art experiences are kind of all the rage right now and um, you know some impressive ones and all over the place it's fun to see a couple of them hit Salt Lake but yeah she's been doing this forever she's, this is just how she's lived yeah. so she's not trendy signs around here. Yeah, I'm gonna imagine that. Alright. Here are my keys. Oh. So you go ahead and talk to Sarah for a minute. Okay. I'll try to find my keys. So we're uh we are I will say this, we're having a lot of fun on this campaign. The, I said this at the Capitol, the staff, all these, everybody that works there, we really like each other, so that makes coming into work a lot of fun. And we'd love to have any of you out there come and be a part of things. We're looking for a ton of volunteer hours to help right now, especially with GOTV. But we also need house parties, we need fundraisers, we need people to stick lawn signs in their yard. Any, you know, there's so many ways you can be a part of getting Jim elected. And we, I don't always want to do a commercial, but you come be a part of us, a part of things for just an hour a month or up to, you know, we have some real responsibility and a lot of experience. And you get to hang out with me. Oh, I mean Jim. That's what I meant. <laughs> um, so what else? Should I tell about my life? Yeah, start with your life. Yeah. So I was born <laughs> 1970. Uh, no, we're not going to talk about that. So I will say okay, this. I think we're going back later because I can't find my keys. You can't find your keys? So, yeah, well, let's go to the west side and then we'll I'll look later. Okay. We left them with lots of food. Wanted to make sure that the house hadn't burned down. <laughs> as much as I tell her, it's bad. She shouldn't be doing that. Cats yeah. never listen. And it, well, it's really the matches, the, you know. The well, get out. her a lighter. Uh, I know. I never thought of that. There's <laughs> nothing worse than a cat off nicotine. So uh. Get some patches. We should ask Christopher about his schooling. Yeah, yeah Christopher is, has been our intern. We share a little with a, a couple of other areas, but 
he's been just tremendous and fun. And, and he likes us best. He, I do. <laughs> he's going Don't where? Uh, to school? Yeah, I mean, it's so cool. <laughs> Nobody else goes there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to university. for asking the person I was there. <laughs> yeah, so you did have the guts to ask. Huh? But it's, it's a fun city. It's actually the third largest in Ireland. It's the third largest city. So yes. let's see, you got Dublin. Dublin, Cork, and then Limerick. I wouldn't have guessed Cork. Cork. Hey, you know what's happening right here? What? Uh, Bagpipe Festival. Now oh. speed by there. <laughs> <laughs> Free concert tonight, but they don't tell you it's a bagpipe concert. <laughs> That's yeah, what should be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do the Irish do bagpipes too? Or is Not it that I've seen. Well, actually, no, they did have some at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh -huh. So a few. But they don't do St. Patrick's Day Parade the way we do, and it's more or less an American holiday, isn't it? No. It's more. It what? Is, yeah. Oh. Like the, the, I've, I've heard, I've never been to Ireland, keep I in mean, mind. Okay. Well, but you have been to on. St. Patrick's Day. I have, I have. Limerick at least has a St. Patrick's Day parade, which is pretty ah. nice. It has some floats and everyone gets out for that. And then the rest of the day is mostly spent drinking. Okay, so it is <laughs> like America. exactly like America. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do people less get green, drunk? Less green beer, though, to be honest. Yeah. Do they get drunk? Yeah, like, usually. they do in America? It's St. Patrick's Day. It's an all-out party. So will the classes be the same that, you're, that you go to? Well, they do the structure a little bit different. So instead of here where you have a bunch of different classes and electives there, your first year you have four classes. So you, well, no, you have six classes, but you have four subjects that you get to choose. Um, so mine were history, psychology, philosophy, and politics. And then your second, third, and fourth year, you narrow it down to two. And you graduate with a double major in those two. So for me, I did psychology and politics. So now I take multiple classes in each of those subjects. Wow. It's, a, it's an interesting structure. I quite like my classes. And it's cheap there, right? I mean, yeah, it's about the same or less than going to the University of Utah here. Really? Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty good deal. And actually, if you're an EU citizen, it's free. For <laughs> so EU citizens? Yeah. Wow. wow. And it's but so you have to pay an out of state. They're out of country or out of EU. Yeah, but I'm still paying less than I would to go to university here, so it's well worth it. And I get to stay in a foreign country, so that's pretty cool. Wow. Can you understand what they're talking about? <laughs> Just some getting used to it, yeah. Their drogue is quite difficult. Yeah, for me. It, it's not too bad after a while. <laughs> and what are you doing this fall? Oh, this fall, uh, I, fingers crossed, have an internship in Brussels. U.S. mission to the EU, so I'm hopefully going to be on my way to Belgium in September. Hopefully, or you are? Waiting on a security clearance. <laughs> by the EU? Does security clearance? No, by the uh, U.S. State Department. What do they care? You have to have a clearance school well, because it's, it's the U.S. mission to the EU, so it's, oh, it's a the subset US, of the oh. U.S. Embassy. Well, I guess you never know these days, but... You put in a good word for me. <laughs> Whatever secrets we had, Trump has told them anyway. I mean, you know, I don't know what. A small fry in comparison. Yeah. Get over there before we don't have a mission to the U. <laughs> Oof. The way the State Department is right now. Well, they're there. Local politics, we don't really care, do we? No. Nah. All that union stuff. But you will. You'll be our correspondent there and keep us up to date. It's exciting. So will they get you a place to stay and give you a salary, or that's up to you? They just have the job. That's up to me, but I found a cool little place uh, that I should be staying, which will be fun. It's basically a dorm for interns, because they have so many of them in Brussels. It's like the headquarter of the EU, uh -huh. so they have a lot of housing for interns specifically. Um, so I'm going to be placed there. So it's maybe a little subsidized, too? Uh, possibly. Oh. You pay more in Brussels than in... Um, Limerick? About the same. Housing-wise, anyways. And what about here? 
Well, here I'm living with my parents during the summer, so. But I mean, would it be the same? Um, I think here would probably be a little bit more. More in Salt Lake. But I'm not an expert on that. Look at this. Oh, wow. oh look at the mural over there. That's yeah. Wow. That's high housing, sir. Yeah, looks like it. Sarah knows everything because she's. I know very few things, but I do know some things. And I do know some things. Well, when do you take off, Christopher, for Europe? September 1st. Oh, so you got a while. Tell me for like another month and a bit. Month and a bit. <laughs> can you. Can you fake like an Irish accent now? I would be horribly embarrassed to try on. Oh, let's you know. see it. No, no. I totally want to see, see it. You do yours. Oh, I don't know what it is. But you, Jim? Think you can do a passable Irish? Uh, if somebody else did it, I might be able to follow on. <laughs> yeah, I could maybe do it if someone look, else did this, it. Look at the outside of this house. It's oh, really wow. cool. And it's a great story. I hope they tell us. Yeah, we'll ask them. This is the one we're going into. Thing. It's showtime. Everybody put on a smiling face. coming a couple of blocks away. This is one of the great organizations of our entire city. They do a lot of things. And how exciting it's going to be in the new boys club. The highway's so loud. Can you hear that? Yeah. I know it's very loud. It's rush hour. The freeways. Side of the house, how beautiful it is. Oh, yeah. Really? Really? Thanks. Did yep. you see my garden? We got no. the weather, though. Oh, oh, yeah. oh I have right out of the front there. Yeah, right there. Oh, we have this huge space, you know, because it's older neighborhood to just have this side, big stretch strip side. And we just beat, so we figured out how to really make it. You know, and we got this have irrigation in there, do you? Uh, do we? No, we don't. We have rights with the city, and I just I need to organize it, and that's one of the goals for this summer. Really? Yeah. How will you do that? Just get like little, little plastic lines to go in there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the main's right out there somewhere, and they're just going to put it over there the shop. That's amazing. Yeah. What is that? It's fun. And it's edible, right? Yep. Yeah. Is everything uh, some zucchinis and uh, no, nothing is cucumbers. Nothing. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. We have a good little bit of tomatoes. Wow, that's good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. seven years and we would walk by going to the gateway and the whole parking area was just pallets of stone and this was kind of meant to be his show as far as we know to show people and that's that guy's poor that guy's life's work 
Yeah, they put a lot of work and love into it. You can just see it by like yeah. the way just, you just design everything. And feel it. So you benefit from this. You do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like almost every group is going All puzzle pieces together. Seven children. Uh huh. Wow. And so, my mom actually hasn't been here, but I'm trying to get her here. She's just waiting for a surgery to happen. And but I've had two sisters, a brother, you know, five girls and two boys. So, so our people haven't been here. And are they all grown up now, or? or yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm number six. I have a little sister, so but we're all a year apart, so <laughs> we're like. Wow. Yeah. My older brother and sister are actually 11 months apart, so they were not wasting their time. <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, I was in Columbia a year or so ago, and it was, seemed to be hopping the economy, and things seemed to be going good. Yeah, it's still, I mean, comparison and what I've seen, I've been, I've been here for 20 years, 
and every time I go, I see an improvement of how things are moving along. We still have a lot, a lot of things that we have to work on, but it's it's good. It, it's just different, you know, different. Some things are good, some things are just different. So Venezuelans, there are so many Venezuelans. I have everywhere. oh so many, so many. It's so sad because, well, still we still have need help, right? And we try to help them and. Good. It's sad. It's sad to see so many people just on the streets asking for money, just yeah, with kids. Uh, thank you. Just and there's no kids. way to do it. I mean, there's. We're talking about the exodus of Venezuelans, desperate to get out of Venezuela, and, and the easiest place to go, kind of, is Colombia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seems like when I was there, it was just really awful and difficult for yeah. uh, for Venezuelans. Mm -hmm. We still, you know, we don't, we just try to help, too. Everybody's doing a little bit of it to help them, however they can. But it is sad. No, it's, it's millions of people. It's hard yeah, to, like, that, a job. I mean, it's not like they're... Or, you see them in the line, like, you stop in the line in the car, and they're, like, out there with kids asking for money or selling anything. It's no candies. Yeah. Can't, it just, it's just really sad. You know? It's hard, because the Venezuelans were very proud People, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah, they, absolutely. They, they've always been on the top end tier of income and education. Always. And, I remember in the 80s, you know, I'm a little older. Nothing. <laughs> but I remember the 80s, people from Colombia were moving to Venezuela because the economy was awesome there because of the petroleum. But that's all they had, the petroleum. Yeah. You know, and they actually I remember they, lots of people that were from Colombia, they moved there and they had better, you know, better opportunities. Right. Okay. Now, I don't know when this happened because it just happened overnight, seems like it. But last three or four years, I I still and maybe I need to get around more. But I've never met anybody from Columbia I don't like. So <laughs> must be. I mean, don't you find everybody oh, yeah. kind of friendly, yeah, and party, and never happy, and just nice people? Never, never a, an odd look or or anything. And when I when I travel, just. Everybody's happy to help. And yeah. Yeah. How's your Spanish? Bad. <laughs> Less to work on still. Yes. Plenty to work on. As, right. as I just learned this last trip, uh, mas regales por favor, which is what you say when you're ordering or getting something at a store. And it, it's, please give me this, right? But I'm going to pay you. So, no, so you always say, oh, me regalas esto, por favor, you know, like, can I have this? But in, it, para regalar for us is, can you give me this for free? Can you give me as a gift? It's just a word that we use, but if people don't think anything of it, they just, can you know, you, they, they just give it to you and we pay. <laughs> can you it. please give me all of the bacon burgers in RV history combined into an one ultimate bacon burger? Wow. Yep. That would be big. <laughs> that would be big. Did you know how old he is? I think it was the... When was he born? I don't know. Can we do this public? Sure. <laughs> Ask me in Spanish. <laughs> ah, you're shy, yeah, a little bit. When does school start again? I don't know. 22nd, I believe. Oh, August. Yeah. I looked in your calendar and it said the 19th. Ooh. Registration. No. Registration no. was the 5th. Oh, yep. okay. Coming up soon then. Wow. Yeah. He knows what's going on. Right? <laughs> where you go? He looks at our calendar so he knows where we at. At all times. Yeah, because all we right. put everything in our calendars, wherever I'm at or his, and we just know. And he does too, so. Where'd you guys meet? Met at a company party in 2006. Uh -huh. yep. For the same company? I, I worked at a place called Mountain Land Design in town, and her friend uh, Alberto was a chef there for parties and such, and uh, brought her as a date. And You stole the Alberto's date. <laughs> I did. I did. Right? I think he's okay with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get some free pastries or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, because those mountain land parties, they're kind of epic. Yeah. You know, they have big, great Christmas parties. Yeah. Oh, yeah, back then, we, we stayed at that resort. Everybody had their own, and they gave Alberto, and so I stayed with them. Yeah, we all had our own. 
basically sweets. Sweets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it, this is like a big kitchen, and, and if you want a really cool kitchen and stuff, that you go to Mount Lion. Yeah. They, they really have top notch great designs awesome. and everything there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just uh, somebody, there's a big competition moving in a store for, that does. Oh, uh, nice uh, Earth there. Elements. Yeah. Earth Elements is okay. kind of a nationwide company. Uh -huh. that, uh, yeah, they're they're becoming a sub wolf dealer, so that's that's kind of a big deal. And they're dropping in the middle of Park City. This is my understanding. Is that a big part of the market for that high end kitchen stuff, Park City? I think so. I because I think it's got the most margin. Yeah. You know, for, yeah. You know, twenty five thousand dollar refrigerator. You know. It's a thing. Yeah. Oh, you're a refrigerator. Or uh, yeah, cell, installation. What's the most expensive refrigerator that anybody in Utah has bought? $17,000. 17000 yeah. No, it's infinite dollars. Close. May as well be. Not close. <laughs> Accurate. And does that go into, does that go into the affordable income houses? <laughs> it does not. <laughs> it does. It costs does not. Much more than our car. Yeah. Is there something really special about it? I mean, uh, I, I, at that end of things, it absolutely keeps your food better. Uh, that one is, is that's a showpiece. That's, that's it's, it's its own piece, piece of art. It's, it's, it's 300 square feet of stainless steel is what it takes to make one of those units. They're, they're ridiculous. Yeah. Not, we use special equipment to move it in. And, you know, four guys that look like uh, bulldogs to move them around. So. Okay. So. The guy that is moving that and scratches it, it's like a big deal, right? It would be. We just put tape over it, move along, yeah, yeah, blame, yeah. blame it on it, somebody else. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's exciting. So are we past the giant building prime for the high-end stuff, or are we still? Oh, no, that's that's a live one. Really, really going on and strong. Uh, the company I'm at now, we, we do mainly custom cabinetry and that that market uh, since ever since things when things died off that market stayed strong it's stronger now than, than it's ever been the when things really crashed the work just kind of moved away worked out of state a lot but now it's it's all localized there's a yeah, there's a lot going on here at that at that end of things so do you you build them or do you help design them or what my behalf is just appliances that uh, selling them, installing them, um, helping people get get their ventilation right, get the layout correct, and, and help them pick out the what they're after, basically. You work with designers, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at our shop, we we have six or so cabinet designers, but also yeah, I work with interior designers and contractors as well. Yeah, there's all these lows, right? There is. There absolutely. It's the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> for <a> dollars. <laughs> yeah. Relatively speaking. Yeah. 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 Order probably yeah. of, of that. Mm -hmm. That's definitely high end. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. yeah. But it's fun. It's challenging. It's you guys go anywhere on vacation between now and when, you, when school starts? I mean, you've been in Columbia. This yeah. yeah. I think Columbia occupies it pretty much. Go to Jellystone. Yeah, we might go to Jellystone. Yeah. And we are not going. We never been. I never been, so. I oh, you never been? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Go down there. They don't yeah. have that big planer on. Big volcano eruption. Oh, well, the nine-year-old that got flipped by a bison on Monday. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Did he? Did the kid end up okay? I believe so. Just more shocked and frightened than anything. And that was the bison. <laughs> yeah, no. Sure, they didn't put him down, but yeah. Do they? Do they put him down? Well, I don't think so. No, it's their park. Yeah, it's it's their park. This uh, part of the article I read said twenty or so people had gathered around for longer than thirty minutes and spooked him. Spooked who? Spooked the bison. You're supposed to stay away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they're real animals. If someone yeah. gets a zoo. No, I don't. I mean, we go to Uncle Island a lot. Mm -hmm. You do uh, races there. You have to be, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. I think somebody, got, no, no. Somebody, they charge, they charge at a runner because you're out of the race. 
Do you, you raise bisons? No. Uh. Yeah, he raised bison. No, but there's lots of races that he does that when he runs. And oh, you're talking about like running? Yeah, running. Yeah. That's not my okay. So, but when you <laughs> go there, you're like, you see them so close, yeah. but you, you know, you're in the car. But. Yeah. They're really it's scary. Yeah, they're freaky. Of course, their whole life they've been around mm -hmm. people, at least to that extent. Yeah. Cars. I'm kind of used to it. It's just every couple of years somebody gets charged. And do they? Can they get across to the mainland? Ooh. Jeez. I, I mean, it would take the roadway, right? Yeah. So I, I suppose it's feasible. I don't know if they lead them away. Uh, Maybe they, you know, sometimes <laughs> they have those great things so that. Oh, touche. They're at the main gate? Yeah. Yeah, they, they do have those. That's Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Mm hmm. And they have a what a runaround in Old Island every year. Yeah, the there's a guy that puts on a handful of races out there throughout the year. And it's just a fun location. It's a nice community get together to see the same faces year after year doing it. So. And so you know, we don't get like a lot of international people or something. I mean, it would seem like it would be a cool, it could be a cool. It is a destination of sorts uh, because he's got a really good early season race and that brings in. Um, Jeez. It's like it's four races going on within two days. So. And they do 100 fun. mile. Yeah. So yeah, some people come from all states. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's such some unique, runners. Right? Oh, super unique. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, the Yellowstone the bears would eat them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's pretty though. The you know I run one race once. <laughs> Stuff. But it was, it was so pretty. How many pretty. kilometers? It's. Twenty five. You ran 25 kilometers. <laughs> I don't remember. I ran, I ran a billion miles. Wow. Yeah. That's the long, the farthest, I guess, the longest. longest and is that what you ran as well? Yeah, right in that area. Yeah. That's where I like to 25 More than that, mm -hmm. sometimes. Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. And you, you can't use those little cards. <laughs> <laughs> It will be considered like they can go be <laughs> they can go be few out if you're tired. Yeah, uh, if you're two more down. I do use sticks here and there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you can know sticks. That's right. Sticks help a little bit, but it's yeah. But you do sticks. So what's going on with the city in your neck of the woods? Anything new and exciting, or anything we ought to be doing or not doing? Um, the the thing that that I, I'm. I've heard a lot about, so I, I got kind of brushed up on is, and, and I share the same concerns, is Inland Port, you know, that sounds to me like it's going to happen. There's no actual stopping to it, but I, I'm with you on it's got to be done clean. We have, we have enough trouble in here with, with bad air that, that, you know, come wintertime, we're hoping for storms, and even summertime, we're hoping for storms to clear out the air, and, and there's no... It doesn't feel like there's anything proactive done, you know, above that. That, uh, that, that, clean air is a big concern, especially where we live so close to the refineries and everything. That, and the freeway. Too. And the freeway. That we're, you know, we're, we're up close with it. You know? I'm surprised how loud that is, <clears throat> the freeway. Hmm. But what was the noise I was hearing out there? Maybe it wasn't the freeway, that storm was coming in. That, I, yeah. We've probably gone a little, uh, you know, ear blind. Maybe That's a word to it. to it, yeah. But it was pretty windy when we were outside. Yeah, yeah. it was like a wild car. Um, the barriers work okay then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. And we're a little far, and you know, this house, I think, being so old, it's uh, with the brick and stone. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, not sound really at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's nice here. here. Is it raining? So that is an interesting thing. Um, it looks like at 10, I'm going to go drive down to Draper and pound on Greg Hughes' door. <laughs> and, Tell me so. And say, Greg, come on, what the hell? Where did you come up with this company idea? And no, we we'll have a no. real chat about it. Because, I mean, on, on the city's kind of master plan, it wasn't an England poor, but it was to do some kind of thing in that neighborhood out there, you know, like the International Center. Sure. 
And what the legislature and the governor were doing, in my opinion, is they didn't want to work with the city. Because Salt Lake City has different ideas and values than the legislature. Mm -hmm. And so rather than sit down, if they want to be a partner, they want to help out, they want to help with financing, they want to help us get things done, that's one thing. It's one thing if you if you have a, a partner that you trust and that since it's your land or at least it's in your jurisdiction, if you make the final decision, it's one thing. But on the other hand, when your partner comes in and says, okay, I'm taking over all the land and you, you've got minimal or no say, and we're going to tell you how to do it, and we're putting all of our people in charge. That's no way in good faith to yeah. do it. And that's what the state did to us. So, first thing that has to happen is we got to sit down with the state and say, no, it can't work this way. And the only way we can do that, I mean, they have the law, they have everything done, it's mm -hmm. all in their favor. So, the only way to do that is to get this lawsuit. I mean, maybe we win. Probably for sure it gets delayed the way the Legacy Highway was delayed and delayed. So it gives us a chip at the bargaining table for them to want to come to an agreement with us that will make it um, neutral on uh, emissions and not have any diesel and do a lot of the environmental things. So if they want to play the game that way, and they want to have the city and the city's vision and values in control, maybe we can make a deal. You know, we're not totally opposed, we're not crazy people. But they need to respect, not the idea of like respect us as a city, it's not about that, it's about our views are gonna prevail on pollution, and our views are gonna prevail on the environment, and our views are gonna prevail in these areas. And I think that's the honest thing. I'll talk to you about that tonight. I saw it right together. So we'll see. Okay. And you guys, it's, it's already enough pollution out here. We can leave this part of the city. Yeah. yeah. And we love being here in you know? yeah. New um, A couple of years ago, we struggled with some allergies. I did so bad. And I seriously even thought about like we just need to leave. We have to move. That's what actually the um, uh, the doctor told me. Well, do you get used to this? This is what you're allergic to. All the trees and and the pollution and either you know move away. I'm like I don't want to move. But this is why I live. You know I love it here. So, so what are you doing now? What are you doing about the allergies? So I did lots of treatment, lots of natural uh, treatments and cleanses and stuff, and that seemed to help at the time. Um, but still, we also bought an air purifier that yeah. we have in the house that was a little pricey, but we thought, let's, let's give it a try. And it purifies the air in, you know, in our room, so we can put it in, in different rooms, especially in my bedroom. Before that, and that it's working. Too. It's working. Yeah, because yeah, I get allergies a lot. We used to get have a, like a little allergy season. Now it seems like most of the year. Yeah, well, that's why it was yeah. there. Like it, it, it wasn't only like in you know spring or no. It was just all like, whole year. I struggled yeah. so much. And that helped a ton. Wow. Well, I, um, I don't know what we can do about that. As far as this <laughs> I can give you some good tips. Some Colombian tips. Yes. <laughs> Is there a Colombian community? Much of a Colombian community in Salt Lake? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, we, you know, actually, the Colombian. There, there is some, but I don't know if I'm just not part of it or I don't know enough. I don't know if not that many of us here, but. Um, yeah. It's kind of like pockets of extended yeah. friends. That uh, you know, that I have, but I don't track them down and get within twenty people hanging out. But I feel like we don't have a strong community to like, hey, let's just get together and do this. Yeah. Maybe there's a big football game. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And 
Bogota is as crowded and as <laughs> always. Yeah, anytime uh, somebody mentions traffic around here, we we have nothing on the rest of the world. Period. It's nothing, man. I nothing. love it here. I can drive I go the back roads to not find traffic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We I don't can, have it the same I can get used no, to that. I mean, if I have to, but it's, it's tough. It's such a beautiful city. It's not even that, that big. I mean, distance, you know, we move from house to house and it takes half a day to get to the Hello, it's me, Dante from school. I can roll in. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like one giant Mexico City kind of, you know, just huge. Yeah. It's just impossible yeah. to just help it. I don't know how the mayors of Bogota or Mexico City do it. Cause you know, we have a rule set. You could black out. They start to be in a couple hours. You don't use your car now. It's like a whole day. You use uh, the license plate and then odd numbers. You cannot use the car between this date and this date and this time. It's still. <laughs> it's good for air pollution, also. Is that what is it? Congestion, also. It's more for traffic. Yeah, because it's just uh, traffic. Fly. Yeah, it's slow. Mm -hmm. They have. Um, they have improved a lot into the air, but there's still a lot of cars out there. Yeah, and they don't have the same regulations as we do on vehicles. So it's you, you'll have you'll literally be driving next to a fifty year old car just spewing spewing yeah. smoke. The yeah. Good thing though is that Bogota rains as much as Seattle, I think. So yeah, it's got a chance to. So clear. anytime you just get sprinkling, I feel like the air gets keep cleaning. You know, I mean naturally. Because it just rains. Everything is green around it. You, you don't have sprinklers, really. Just everything is normal here because it rains. Lots of crime. <laughs> because the cops can't get there. Yep. True. Well, because the traffic tapes are bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about around here? Are you noticing homeless as a broader issue than it was, say, before Rio Grande? Positively, positively. Uh, being that we're so close to North Temple. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. They come into the neighborhood. The The police have actually, I'm so impressed when they, that Arctic Circle over on the North Temple closed up shop due to the homelessness, homeless people living next door at that kind of seedy motel where that, uh, the owner wouldn't work with the city. And cops put in a cop shop there and it, and it cleared it out. They came into the neighborhoods a little bit and still get them just because it's, it's summer, but, but nobody's, Nobody's overly bothersome or troublesome. Um, I, is it still an issue? Or are we just shuffling it around? That's that's a little bit of what I see, and you know, I I an idea I heard the other day that I agree with is they're coming here because it's an urban central center, right? That this is where easy access to services, drugs for that matter, and uh, you know, I I'd like to see some other cities carrying the weight of that, because these are certainly people that are coming here from their cities because they don't have any services to offer. Make things makes me think of back when Draper said, whoa, 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 hang on. Don't put any don't put a homeless help center out here. We don't want. Well, I hey, we all need to do our part with that though, as well. You know? What that brave mayor. Right? <laughs> you know, and he got slapped down. I mean yeah. and he said, Yeah, we'll take our share and even offer the site I Which I, I, I even under I understand to an extent because of course nobody I mean it is what it is. You, you live in the city, it's it's part of it. We're we're accustomed to it. It's um, it's definitely it, in our neighborhood it feels like it's lessened than than what it was when since we moved here four years ago. But I, I still think if, if other cities can offer those services as well to help out their people that are in need. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So they, they closed the police station, uh, I guess you probably saw recently up there on the, where the Arctic Circle was. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did? Yeah. And so I'm, it's been a month or so. Have you noticed, it? Have you noticed any change yet or, or at all? Or? Just the fact. Yeah. I, I, I can't say I have. No, yeah. I, I see him a little closer off North Temple, um, kind of coming into the neighborhoods in those big giant uh, center parking strips. But as as far as right here, no, no. 
but we we had a we had a nice little flop house about three years ago now. Mm -hmm. That that attracted quite a bit of attention, but uh, they finally were able to run off the homeowner. Neighborhood Works took it over and cleaned it up and so really helped out a lot. Yeah. yeah, helps out a lot too. I think we have that that low income uh, apartment building over there. And really you, helpful. Is that is that, is that are they good neighbors? Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. We see yeah. a little increase in traffic from the fourth west and the low income, but it's mostly people uh, walking their dog. We see more young yeah. people. Um, no, nobody people likes that. Walking their dogs. <laughs> so, but other than our traffic is still pretty good. Yeah. I think right. people still get um, on the east part to get on the freeway. So I mean, it seems. Fun. It'll be interesting to see if I get elected because um, I think the city has so much patience with, I don't want to name any hotel or motel people in particular, but gee, if you've got a hotel and you're running it poorly mm -hmm. and you're taking cash and you know that there's illegal, illicit activity yeah, going on. Yeah, I don't get it, though. And there's drug dealers outside and prostitutes and people that visit prostitutes. I can't read that, Sarah. Facebook hard stop in two minutes. Oh, okay, all right. Facebook what? Um, hard stop? So let's do that. Let's do that right now. I have to tell you what we're doing. So Facebook says you can't be on a Facebook Live any more than four hours straight. So we're coming up on our third four hours right now. Oh, and wow. so we have to stop. We will stop. We'll continue with the discussion that I ought to have perhaps between mayors and hotel owners in a second. <laughs> but we have to say goodbye. We'll be gone two minutes. Then we'll be back. Free ice cream for everybody that comes right back. So <laughs> we'll see you in two minutes. Does it have Oreo ice cream?